My name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the R&B Money Podcast, the authority Come on. on all things yeah, yeah. R&B. We're about to get into the shit. Ooh, it's about to get R&B. Yeah. Mm, yeah. The credential list is long. Yes, sir. How many people you done wrote and produced for? Oh. Hmm? How long A you been doing it? A hmm? lot is you, is, of them. Is your competitive yeah. edge? Is yeah. your competitive yeah, hmm, you mean with you it? Trying to kick down doors. You try, you try yeah, to kick down yeah, doors, yeah, huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. It's supposed to be what it's supposed Dallas, to be. I was waiting on you to huh? tell this waiting on you. Yeah. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> our good friend and our brother, Michael Powell in the building. Yeah. Our good brother. It, um, is, it is good to finally be here, brothers. Oh, man, welcome. listen, it was, welcome, it was, it was Thank never you. a matter of, it's just a matter of when, whenever you yeah, felt yeah. like, you know, gracing us with your presence, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to say, I want to I kick this motherfucker off like this. You are probably... In the spirit of competitive nature, like in terms of knowing somebody competitive in this shit, not just in this shit, in life, in life, mm -hmm. you are him. Yeah. I've watched you wow. from the beginning, whether it be on the basketball court, in the studio, wherever, I'm going to figure this shit out. Yeah. And I'm not gonna stop until I do. We be in that gym. I I I ain't win today. I'll be back. I'll be back. Who would pick you on the team? Me. And he and he'd tell me, just keep shooting. Just keep shooting. Cook them. Cook. Yeah. I got your back. And I would cook. And you would, I would cook. cook. <laughs> and I would cook. <laughs> It wasn't every day, but I was cooking. When, <laughs> when Tay came to the gym, I was cooking. Because, because I saw something in you that I saw I saw that no quit mm. in you early. Mm. And I, me and Jay used to talk about you. I said, when that nigga figure it out, he's going to be a problem. Mm. Because he's, he's, he's taking the fucking stairs. Mm. Mm. He not taking no shortcuts. He is taking the absolute stairs and... And not to go too far forward because we're going to talk about all that, but being in the studio with you working on my album um, and watching you work, like differently than you working for everybody else, like you were actually working for me. Mm. And me being able to sit back and say, no, 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 let him, let him. You see where he is right now? It was just you at the mic. I think, was, was it Ruben recording you? Who's it's always here? been Ruben. Well, it's yeah. Ruben, right? Yeah. That's the only one I he was, remember. He was he was right there beside you, and it was just yeah, you yeah, yeah, at yeah. the board with the mic yeah. and him. And um, uh, who was it? Me and uh, who was with us? Uh, Frank. Uh, Frank. It was Frank. Me, uh, me and Frank. But, but also, too, we had- He, he came we, later. We, we had Lucky in there, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Lucky and, 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 and Kevin, and Kevin uh, Ross. Kevin Ross. They, they came. But when we were doing- and, and you were sitting at the mic, and you were working. Mm. And I was just like- and Frank was like, nah, he should. Mm. He cooking. Let him cook. He cooking. Damn. Yeah. And I was like this. This motherfucker, he got it. He figured it out. He got it. He hot. Wow. <laughs> hey, that's crazy that you say that, man. And I really appreciate you, like, throughout the years, really pouring into me like yeah. you did. Because that's the type of energy I always responded to. Yeah. I just need one nigga to just put the battery in yeah. my back. You know yeah. what I mean? Then I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it cooking. But you know, my my process, I, things don't just come like that. You know what I mean? But if you sit there, like you said, let a nigga simmer, tss, fall back. Yeah. Let him cook. Give him yeah, a couple times cook. to work up, and you are gonna get what you you know. Because you're 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 cerebral. You know what I mean? Like you're mm. smart, and so you know. Man I, I, man, I appreciate you saying all this shit for real. I really am taking all this in, bro. I'm sorry to cut bro, you we off. Bro, we bro, we've been watching you for years. For years, you're smart, and you're like, okay, and then and then I'm gonna do this, and then see what I, the way like, we've had those phone conversations, yeah, 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 yeah. and then nigga, because I'm gonna put it that way, and make it, and it's like this. Oh, okay, <laughs> I hear you. And everything we've ever talked about, everything that you've always said that you're thinking. Yeah, yeah. That's why you're here. You're here. Hey. We, ha we have to tell that story. Yeah. 
because again, everybody always, everybody loves to celebrate the finished product. Yeah. Ooh, but that story and that journey there. Come on. That mud. Yeah. Yeah. That rough side of that process, mountain. That process. You got damn right. That process for real. I ain't, listen, I haven't hit a lottery. I never hit the lottery in the music, the, in the music business. Now we're living a lottery, but I've never hit the boo, just run away. Mm-hmm. I have to work for all of them. Mm. So that's where we're relating that. Because you got to, to live that one, you got to be a dog to live that one. Because we got to start from the beginning every time. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. You got to have a different kind of muscle. Yeah. To have 15, 20 yeah. of just grind out. Yes. Because like, it's just it's just something that you want. My dad always told me what you had that your brother didn't have was tenacity. <laughs> he got it. <laughs> and 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 I, and I took that and cuz you know as an artist you you want to feel respected and mm -hmm. I felt like the the ones getting respect were the ones that were just everything mm -hmm. they touched turned gold or they just was getting it off the top and I was putting unwanted pressure on myself. Once I slowed down though mm -hmm. and got to really like understand all right i could take my time with this and if it didn't want to allow me to take my time then it ain't for me mm -hmm. but i gotta do my process so when you say like work at it i think my whole if you could sum up my life as a whole it would just be one word process i'm always in process hmm. well let's go to the beginning of this process yes sir let's go to the beginning when to the ie the I, yeah, the yeah, I, yeah. I've lived yeah. out that way. To the inland I, I got some friends out there. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been out yeah. there. Man. Hey, is it is it fifteen IE or two fifteen IE? Mm, that's a great question. <laughs> a great question. I'm, I'm two fifteen is deep IE. Yeah, two fifteen is deep. Is deep IE. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. You probably, you probably more like fifteen if you was in Rancho Ontario. Yeah, I was yeah, Rancho. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was I was Corona. Them was the niggas that moved on up. You What's know the, what I mean? I, I wasn't up. I was moving down because I, I, I had to get out of L.A. because the money was funny. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know they had this nice two bedroom in Rancho Cucamonga. Yeah, for a steal. Yeah. <laughs> you were still up. So I was yeah. like, you were still up. You went on the what is it two fifteen? You went yeah, on, on, the two on the two fifteen. You was on the it's fifteen. A, oh, what's the part out there in in I like, name name. San Bern with San Bernardino? Uh yeah. I mean you got San Bernardino, you then you got Rialto, then you got Fontana, then you got uh Rancho, you got Ontario. I'm trying to think what but part you my guy is. If you can't say San Bernardino, you say San Bernardino. San Bernardino? San, San Bernardino. San Bernardino. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, we call, of, we they call it, from out there. We call it, no, we call it the Dino. The Dino. The Dino. So the one of my guys, Dino. Curtis, he was my production manager and all of that for years. Uh -huh. That's where him and his family lived. Yeah. So I would always go out there to hang out with him and his family or what have mm -hmm. you. And I, I thought it was cool out there. Yeah. And that's what gave me even the idea when to LA move. just wasn't working out for me, I was like, man, I got to go somewhere where I can in the vicinity, still live though. cool and yeah. still get back if I need to. And that's why I went to Rancho and went to Corona. That's fire. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Man. I was out there living it. I was, I was. It was a, a Best Buy. No, it was a Circus City out there. Circus City. I was the king. I was the king of Circus City. I was always buying something out of Circus City. King, of king, king of Circus City. And then um, there was a Red Lobster out there. I was the king of that Red Lobster. You know what I'm saying? Those mm -hmm. two, always those two places. And those two places. They knew your name. They knew my name. Cheddar biscuits. Yeah, they knew where yeah. the you know where my seat was <laughs> and everything. Yeah. And and, and uh, Ontario Mills. Yeah. You know. You gotta get. You gotta get there. You 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 gotta, you, gotta get your clothes at a discount with the money. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and the Mills had the discounts. You gotta, you, you, all right. The Nike yeah. Outlet. You know what I'm saying? You can still look like. It's last yeah. seasons, but you know they fresh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you you born and raised there? Um, I'm born in San Bernardino, really raised in Rialto. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I lived in San Bernardino for like four or five years of my life, and then my dad uh, married again. And shout out to my dad who, uh, on his own, man, was taking care of three boys and a girl on the weekends in San Bernardino. My dad actually built the projects we was born in. Wait, wait, oh, wait what? <laughs> he built the projects we was born in. We was <laughs> so pops is in construction. N no, it just was uh, he needed a job, and so he worked <laughs> on the projects we was born. Like I came home to the first place I ever lived. He worked. He on He helped build it. He helped build it. Yeah, but not by trade. No, nah. it was just he needed a gig out of survival, nigga. What y'all need? What y'all need? These logs? Yeah, you need, yeah, you need yeah. These wow. two by fours. You mean the yeah. hammer? These slats? Come on. Come, 
paint. I'll whatever. figure it out. My dad did whatever. So got these kids. Got to yeah, figure yeah, it out. Yeah. So yeah. So we basically uh, grew up in the projects. We didn't know they was projects because they was townhomes. None right. of us. None of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I knew I was in the. Oh, yeah. what I <laughs> See, I didn't stay long enough to know that I, that, <sighs> that we lived there. <laughs> 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 you yeah. can't tell me everybody didn't have roaches. I thought that yeah, yeah. Hey, that's, yeah. I knew everybody's supposed to have roaches. No, I knew we all have them. Nigga, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never woke up with a roach running across what? your toe. Okay, super right. Yeah. Super Nigga. roaches. They would just stay and eat with you. What y'all? What y'all got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What y'all, <laughs> what y'all got? Designing, huh? I like that. Yeah, I like yeah. design. It get to a point you we, turn the lights on, they don't even run. They don't even run. <laughs> they just lazy. They're looking at you like this. What, what you need? Can we help? Can we help you? <laughs> you know we got an agreement. You killing us today or no? <laughs> <laughs> and then you go up to the bathroom a certain hour. They like, what you doing in here? This is our, <laughs> this is our time. <laughs> like uh, I never want to. I'm go talking back. about. I I'm, never want to. Yeah, go bro. Back. I, I'm talking about. I lived in like project yeah, projects. Yeah, yeah. Talking about candy house. Mm-hmm. We had the candy lady. You realize how dangerous that is? Hell yeah. <laughs> yes, bro. But, Hell but, yeah. Fake. but when you, but when you then, live though. there, though, the it's danger, utopia. it don't feel dangerous. Yeah. It just feels like you're friends. It yeah. really, but here's the thing. Can we say this? It wasn't as dangerous. No, it was dangerous. As it is today. Tank, it was dangerous. It was nah, dangerous, bro. No, nah, listen, listen. Tank, it was dangerous, bro. Listen. You listen. were just were, you were just part of that environment at the time. It was dangerous, the bro. The place where I grew up in, there was a project called the Little Zions right across the street. Back and forth, shootouts. It was all that. I uh, understand that. I understand that. I understand the violence was there. I understand all these things was there. But I think that, I think that the OGs at that point in time had a little bit more reverence mm. for kids and women. Yeah. Not but, when they was on crack. But you got to say, because <laughs> <'cause, laughs> there's, there's that. No, but, be, but listen. the OGs because, became smokers. But, think about, this, but think about this. The grandmothers were still there, too. It's true. That's true, and it was some. Re- it was some respect. It was some. It, it was, was still some. some yeah. Like you say, the candy yeah. lady. The yeah. candy lady wasn't wasn't putting nothing crazy in your yeah, candy. Yeah, yeah, true. Candy lady yeah. that never put. You never heard of somebody saying, "Man, I got something from the candy lady." I was in the hospital for two days, for yeah, two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, you just don't. You know. Oh, they listen that. You don't know. Yeah, you don't know. it's yeah. it's now it's really there's no respect no more. Yeah. Right. So I, my mine's wasn't a projects, but it was a hood. I didn't know. I didn't know. Of course, we didn't know it was the hood. I just knew it was a bunch of gang members and and, and fights yeah. and, and stabbings and whatever. I just I thought that was normal. Nigga Tank be acting like he grew up in the fifties and niggas was stabbing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nigga, knife was a thing, nigga. Hey, a knife was a You're thing in that. Bro, that's an East Coast. Was. That's an East Coast it's thing. It's a very East Coast thing. We've been shooting a Midwest. for a long time. Y'all Midwest. Yeah. Midwest. Yeah. Oh, right, a okay. knife yeah. and a fight was yeah. a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If somebody mm-hmm. had a gun. You were from the West Coast. Oh, he was different. Yeah, the West Coast yeah. niggas yeah, been nah, shooting. Oh, niggas was popping. It's the Wild West. It's heaters. They call it the Wild West. So it's just like you know, I just feel like my great grandfather had respect i mean he had a shotgun on the, on the porch where everybody else had knives see yeah, yeah. see yeah, that's why go. he had the respect it's all yeah. making sense yeah. to you yeah. now yeah. your house had the gun yeah. the yeah. big gun yeah. like nigga it makes yeah. perfect sense you now. was living with the equalizer <laughs> 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 do you have to watch uh, <laughs> paul, yeah. lewis, paul lewis had that shotgun on standby yeah put the little dip of stuff in the uh, oh yeah and sit on that porch mm-hmm and dare a nigga to to talk, just not say nothing to him, to talk. Yeah. Talk while you're in front of my house. Yeah, Try it. He had a different type of chip on his shoulder, man. Right, right, right. <laughs> what was going on? <laughs> right, right. Hey, Paul Lewis come home and say, it's a big difference now. Paul Lewis home. Full name? It's a big motherfucking <laughs> difference now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, listen. And we be sitting at the, at, the, at the kitchen table. Paul Lewis be tripping. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Don't look up. Just don't look at him. If you don't yeah. look at him, he'll just he'll keep walking. Don't don't look at him. Yeah, Paul Lewis home now. <laughs> His wife, Big Mama, be like, I know, I know, Paul Lewis home. I know he home. I know Paul Lewis home. Mm-hmm. I know My grandma was the only one. Go sit down somewhere. Go. <laughs> Pop, go sit down somewhere. You you, you been drinking. Go sit down. And my grandma was the only one. Everybody, all the rest of us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's like you said. It's like the 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 difference in respect. But getting back to your to to your story, like that growing up in the hood thing, and your oh, father yeah, yeah. working on the projects as not a constructor, 
yeah. is is giving me more insight into your bloodline. Keep and, going. And yeah. to think that <laughs> this nigga was like twenty three years old. <laughs> Wait, <Andy's, laughs> this like twenty three. This nigga was like oh, twenty three years old with, with four kids. Oh, huh. he was this one man R and B music. Uh, For sure. You know what? For sure. I think it was the gospel. Oh, he Got was it. in the church with twenty at twenty three with four kids. Oh, they yeah, didn't kick yeah. him out. Yeah. No, because he was married. Oh, okay. All right. All yeah, right. he All got right. married. They okay. got married young, but they kind of got forced to get married. I mean, it's a it's a classic black story. Um, I had the I had the grandfather that was the. You gonna marry my baby? Yeah, but also too like well, he was my mom's um, stepdad mm -hmm. because my mom's dad was Filipino. And he got gunned down when she was like seven, uh, so we never really like knew him like that. Um, but yeah, that's another story. But getting back to like my upbringing, yeah, um, projects, all of that until five, and then we moved. We moved up for us, moved to Rialto, and um, we actually lived in the neighborhood. My dad got married to my stepmom. They're still to uh, still together today, and um, yeah, we moved to a. <laughs> we moved to a, a three bedroom house that was like a thousand square feet, and it and, but it, it looked it was, like it, it was it, it was, was like a mansion like to that. us. Yeah, you're fucking right. The it house was, a, it was, was all a, bedrooms. It, fucking right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> three bedrooms and yeah, a yeah, thousand. Yeah. Square. Niggas, it literally was. It was like you just go from bedroom to bedroom to bedroom. Yes, yes, dog. Literally going from bedroom I to bedroom. It. But because when you think about it now, it, yes, it's like when you go back to the house you grew up in. Everything is really, yeah, really Everything small. Everything seems really small, but when I was a kid, this, this was the biggest was house in the world. But even people, though. Yeah. You ever thought about that? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. As yeah. you get older, you're like, damn, you was really a little nigga talking shit to me like that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just because you was 30? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, little ass now, I should have fired on you. Bro, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you, <laughs> when you grow up and go through stuff, you you realize how ain't shit motherfuckers was around you. Man, yeah. niggas promising you bikes and shit yeah. when you're young. Yeah. What? Flossing you. Yeah. All the while trying to get at your mama. <laughs> they weren't trying to get at my mama. <laughs> my daddy wasn't having it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I already nope, know. They leave her alone. OG, OG Ron <laughs> Newt. Come on. You're in Rialto in this new space. Do do you do you at some point while you're while you're this kid realize that you have a love for music, or does somebody kind of point it out for you? Oh no, I I knew it for me. Oh shit! Because I was real in the kindergarten. I don't remember much about kindergarten, but I do remember that I did a talent show with a group, and we were new edition. You had a group, in yes. Kindergarten. Okay, and I was mad because I couldn't be Bobby Brown. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should be. Somebody else picked Bobby. Man, somebody else picked Bobby, and on top of that, I had this suit that I hated. I hated niggas that wore suits. I okay. wanted to. I wanted to express but you grew myself up in church. I, that's probably why I hated it. Okay, all right. Uh, they, I had this suit on, and I didn't. At this point, I didn't know which one, which member I was. I just knew I wasn't Bobby, and they didn't give me the leads. And I think that so that moment Ralph right neither there, you, you weren't Ralph neither. If you, I just you was a nigga that Bobby blended in. All I knew was this other nigga named Brandon, and I, he was my he was my boy, but he took the uh, the lead part, and I just kept looking at him like, man, why y'all performing? Yes, that's <laughs> this is when I knew. Like R and B was my shit because I wanted to especially sing my prerogative, and I wanted to do that lean that he be doing. And I had a Gumby just like Bobby. It was this, a kitchen cut, but it was other a Gumby nigga singing the lead. Wait, yes. Wait, but and then that's the other thing. I think they tricked you because my prerogative is not new addition. That's just Bobby by himself. So actually, you were in Heart and Soul as a dancer. You really you wasn't in new addition. No, I'm giving you the, the, the real now. Cause. Right, we was new edition, but I wanted to sing my prerogative. That's what I'm saying. though. y'all wasn't new edition. If y'all go sing my prerogative, hey, and you ain't you Bobby, wanted, right? You wanted to sing Mr. Telephone Man. So, nah, no, he wanted to sing my prerogative. You know Maybe what? You put it back in the group. You know what? <laughs> now, now, and I told you I don't remember much. Now that I think about it, now that I think about it, we were singing the boys. You remember the boys? Do I remember the boys? You so, talking down to, my heart? You're talking so to the authority the of R and B. I yeah. wasn't the lead nigga. And that's you all I Taj? cared about. Nah, no, I, the nah, the nigga was Hakeem. 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 Yeah. Hakeem. It was, no, it was Taj and, and Hakeem. And check this out. Hakeem is Micah spelled backwards. <laughs> Man, what? What are, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing? That's what, that was Hakeem, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> this is all that was going through my mind. But that go, I was about to say, was this going as a, through as your a mind? Like but that's my name. That's yes. Nah, that's Tell my heart. So, 
at it was that moment, that talent show, that I knew that I wanted to do music. I wanted to be R and B. My mom took us to. You remember at the um, the carnival? They used to have this place where you could do your own music video. Yep, absolutely. And yep. I've my, done a few of those. So my mom and my stepdad, who was uh, shout out to OG Dave Foreman. Y'all probably know Dave Foreman. Yeah, I know gu- Dave Foreman, guitar player. He was my stepdad. He was married to my mom. Hold on. Oh yeah, it's gonna get tricky because I, 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 it's a lot of on. it's a lot of ties we gonna uncover. Here. Are you kidding me? No, nah, I'm not kidding. D- Dave Foreman was my stepdad. <laughs> You know how I many stages I've shared with Dave Foreman? How many yes, meals I I've shared with Dave Foreman? And and to bring it all around full circle, I, Dave Foreman co-produced on a song with DJ Quick that I did with The Game. We all in the session, like old school session, doing it from scratch. And I'm in my, I'm, my mind is blown that this is happening. This was just a couple years ago. That's crazy. Yeah, so. I never knew that. Yeah, so my mom was married to Dave Foreman. Um, they took us to the carnival and we did, um, we did, and that day we did Down My Heart and I was the lead nigga because it was me, it was, it was me and, it was me and my two brothers. (laughs) Because now it's his brothers. Yeah. It was me and my two brothers and Dave and his, uh, my uncle, uh, Al and other dude named Cliff, they were in the back playing, playing as the band. They just goofy, just having fun. Yeah. And they chopped the video up and all that. My parents still got the VHS of that, bro. But those were the days where I figured, like, all right, that was when my my life started to become one big ass R and B video because I was never able to see life any different mm. when it comes to like <laughs> my love for women. Um, I just always seen it as seen women that I loved in slow motion from a little kid, mm. <laughs> and so I think because I feel. R and B music is is nothing but feel. Yeah. Um. It just called. It just called me, dog. And when do you start acting on like? Okay, we got we got we got the talent show thing, right? But when does it become personal? Not other people's music, but now your music. Now you're like, okay, um, I can I can do that. I can write that. I can produce that. I can. When does it become I can? That didn't come till like later when I got in a group. Mm-hmm. Um, How old were you at this point? When I was in a group, we were sixteen. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, and this is probably what B two K days. Yeah, I actually met Omari before I met my group members. We like he like he said we went to school together. Mm-hmm. Omari then spent nights at, at the crib, um, and we my my other cousin David um, who lived with us too. We all went to Hamilton. I remember days where the car would break down and we pushing the car up the hill. I remember Omari look, seeing him pop locking in his sleep. Like when people say they he on, he wait, does wait. that, <laughs> the nigga used to pop lock in his sleep, dog. Just, <laughs> this is champagne right there, man. Get your, get your, get your swig, your champagne, man. <laughs> well, I'm, t- I'm, I'm telling you, when niggas say that he walks around dancing all day, it don't stop. Pop locking in his sleep, dog. Did you ever try to wake him up? Say, hey, man. You, <laughs> hey, you tripping. <laughs> you tripping. <laughs> you going to fall off the bed. Nah, I just you thought. You going to hit the carpet. I, I, just, I just thought that shit was so funny, man. I, I had never met a nigga like him in my life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Up to that point. Yeah. You know? And his B, but B2K is not out yet. Are he in the group B2K, he, he had, when I met him, he was just in B2K uh, because his braids were still a little stingy. And oh, they, had, they hadn't hit the shoulder yet. Yeah, they hadn't hit the shoulder yeah. yet. Um, but he had just did that Pops commercial. And uh, we was hanging out like, man, for a minute, like we was hanging out like every day. Um, and then I end up meeting my group members, um, me and my cousin David, you know, my, have mm-hmm. you ever met my cousin? Yeah, I met My you. cousin David, um, my mom tried to put us in a group. So we auditioned for Third Story one time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going yeah. There, boy. yeah. Oh, look, Shout look. out Third Story, man. Yeah, so look, my God. Good guys, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, my mom worked at BMG which was down the street from my high school, Hamilton. And we used to, I was a senior, I think then, or junior. We used to leave school and I would take girls up to BMG to go get product. And my mom would just flood them with product. That's how I was like, the You was going up to get them you, CDs and shit? You, yes. You been on this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. So, oh, you, oh yeah. So I, that goes to I get it. Yeah. the story of my first ever like introduction into the R&B game was we auditioned for Third Story when they were uh, trying to replace 
uh, Lil Man. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I just remember, man, wearing these Kenneth Cole boots. And that was in that era where niggas was dressing like they was in the Matrix, <laughs> where they had niggas had one strap backpacks, leather uh, jabots, and like uh, European boots. Like niggas, we were dressing like that in high school. Yeah, boots. Yeah, we had boots. So I just remember trying to do a usher slide uh, on the carpet in them boots. So you you auditioned by yourself or you? No, nah, me and my cousin. We both auditioned for a third story for one spot. For one spot though. No, they was gonna add. It was gonna be five niggas. <sighs> that was before they added Jason. Yeah. So we auditioned and, and you failed. I couldn't get out the blocks. I was my I usher. Can't. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't going because of the boots, my boy. My usher. It wasn't going. I was a little nervous. I mean, it was my first time, yeah, you know. Of course. Out being in front of like, you know, a label like that. Um, so yeah. Where but, did you audition for him? Huh? Where was the audition? The audition was at Arista. Okay. It was uh or what were they signed to? Yab Yum. Uh yeah. but it was it was in one of them offices. Yeah, yeah. Back when they yeah. still had offices, yeah, you yeah. know. So um did that. Um Flash forward, probably like a year, maybe less than a year later, um, I have this friend named Kelly who actually, uh, remember, I retweeted her saying that she, I need to be on the R&B podcast. This is the same girl. Okay. Uh, she connected us with uh, these two guys, Jahi and Trey, who were <laughs> simultaneously in this group signed to Chris Dokes called Melodic. You know, he had a bunch of groups. Of mm -hmm. And let me say this. You cannot do music and be from LA and not have been in a group at one point in your life. Hmm. So that was just like a thing here. It just was a thing. Everybody was, it don't matter if you was a male or a female, you had, it was like a rites of passage. Yeah. You had to come through an R&B group. group. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so um, ended up meeting um, the other, meeting my boy Trey, who actually uh, is, is, uh, the president of our club. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He's on tour with Janae. Um, but so Trey sings for us. We sing for him. This whole time I didn't know Trey was in a group. Yeah. Because I know him through, yeah. yeah through and, you didn't, and you didn't know Trey was a world class athlete too. That nigga I had no was, idea. That nigga was, uh, he played, uh, he played running back for uh, Carson. Okay. They were like city champions. Like, I remember being in a group and watching this nigga on Spock, Fox Sports News running back for touchdowns and shit. That's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. And he wasting his time in a group with y'all niggas. He should have been... Nah, he knew he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> My nigga was 5'5". Five, five. He wanted to sing. Yeah, he, he wanted to sing. He want, What's, with the nigga, the, What's with the hype? What's with the hype thing you're doing? I mean... Right, five, five I don't niggas don't can make it like, to the NFL? Like, what you talking about, bro? You're right, you're See, right. it was the, this is the reason right here. <laughs> hey, Trey, do this R&B shit nah. with us, dog, because you ain't going to make the league. <laughs> That nigga could have been a Pro Bowl uh, motherfucking nah, punt but, return or but some truth, shit. But truth be told, like all athletes, he loved music, he loved music more yeah. than sports. And he could do both equally well. So it's like, I know I'm going to go, you know, get this music thing popping. And so from there on, nigga, I'm talking about my our journey was just unheard of, bro. Because we hopped in a deal. They were already like, so Trey and Jahi were already kind of working out a situation with Noontime. Ah. Terry Ross. Mm -hmm. And so talk to TR today. My yeah, dog. Yeah. Um, so we click up with them. The a week later, we're in like an official ass studio on Kawanga. Like, I, nigga, this is my first time ever recording, let alone being in a studio, and we record our first ever song. And that shit was fire. Yeah. Cause you clearly didn't get in third story because you we but, didn't, but but at but <laughs> no, at, we didn't. <laughs> but at this point, you know, and shout out to Third Story, them my bros. But we was we was trying to kill everybody, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we had the dancing like B two K, but we could actually sing too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so, uh, so we get in a we we in the group and um, shit is just moving. I'm talking about to the point where I had to I had to uh, get on home studies from school. Oh, okay. Um, oh, so you get a deal and get an advance. No. Okay. We Here we, we just signed with Noontime. But let me let me not say I got on home studies because I got robbed in high school. <laughs> wait, wait, what? You didn't get no advance. What they rob you for? No, 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 no. I I I'm 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 digressing. I got on home studies because I was in a group, but what pushed that forward was I got robbed by some 
niggas at my high school because I had a two way. Remember them time ports? Yeah. Who you talking to, man? The, the, okay, all right, man. <laughs> cool, all right. Uh, Remember the yeah, two ways? Uh, that man uh, had two ways. You, you had, one, you had them in I, your I video. I might have one somewhere. Yeah. Come on, so, man. So I was the only nigga in my school to have one. And that that was from being in the group. My mom the had group, the corporate huh? account. She put us on the corporate account. Oh, every nigga in the group all had the corporate all account. All on the corporate we account. All on the corporate account. Yeah. And every nigga in the group had a time port. I, of course, I take mine to school, and I'm taking it out, and I'm, you know, everybody like, oh. You're doing oh, the extras. Doing the extras. Doing the extras. And you're a California nigga. Yeah, you do yeah. Extras. yeah. So it, it was one dude in my class. I think he, he like, set me up um, because he, like, asked to see it. He was like, oh, that's hard. And then after school, like, I seen him, and I and I slapped five with him. And then he turned around and did like this to somebody. And I looked back. I was like, that's different. And I keep walking, and next thing I know, a nigga come up behind me and go, hey, this mine, homie. And I'm like, nah, nah, I just got this shit. Then I see four niggas, and then it's all girls, and everybody's standing around watching. You hear somebody go, ooh. So I'm like, nah, nigga, I, I, this my shit, this my shit. He like, nigga, you got five seconds, so I'm a blast. He start pulling his shirt up like this. I'm like, man, I got this heavy-ass backpack on. It's corridors right here. They closed. I'm like, man... Let that shit go, dog. You could get another one. So I'm like, I held on to the last second, and I was like, ah. And to make matters worse, the nigga walked off. I was like, bitch ass nigga. That was my last day of high school. But I was like, I'm need to get, need to get on home studies anyway. I'd have came back and found that nigga. <laughs> I would have came back and found that nigga. Hey, hey, listen. It was some. It was some older niggas. No, no, no. I I'm wasn't. You, I, you, you was smart. Let them. Y'all got the moment. Yeah. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely had that that type of energy, but my mom was like, nah, we moving on to bigger and better things. Yeah, yeah. So so we did that, man. Took a trip to Atlanta, got to meet. When I tell you, bro, we had the most fire demo of all time. Brian Cox. We did one of your mean. songs. We did Fooling Around. That demo what? to this day is the best demo I ever heard, dog. When? Bro, uh, cause then Donnie Scans do that. Yes. Yes. So look, you know how Noontime was a factory, dog. Talk we went the there, they absolutely. already had records laid out yeah, for us, ready yeah. to go. One of the songs was fooling around. We was like, that one. We recorded that one. We we performed that one. That was our one. Uh B Cox, John Tay Austin. Um, and this is after they had all yeah, cracked got it off. off. We had songs from uh Jagged Edge, the the twins. We had Teddy Bishop, Jazzy Faye. Here's another nugget for you. My mama. Babysitter Jazzy Faye. Wait, what? <laughs> so look, the fuck when we go, when we go meet, when we go meet Jazzy for the first time, because we working with him, we all walk in the uh, studio. We like, yeah, what up, what up? We big fans, big fans. My mom walk in, she go, Phelan. He go, Eve. And then, nigga, I'm like, what? So my mom babysat him. He went oh, to my he mom's got peoples from LA. Yeah, 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 from from San Bernardino though. He went to my mom's. Uh, dad's church <laughs> his mom his family that is great crazy right so when y'all walked in there it was just on it was on yeah it was on bro we had our, our demo bro we had a feature from Lil Wayne we had shout out to my boy you Dave had a Young. Lil Wayne feature yes uh, on a Jazzy Faye beat okay, okay. Keep, keep going you, keep going cause Jazzy Faye had a 50 song song deal with Cash which Money which was crazy with Cash Money yeah mm -hmm. which was crazy yeah Jante wrote it I'm talking like about I like, I, no, nigga, we had heat, bro. Everywhere we went, we had three deals, bro. But this was around that time where the industry was like a little shifty. Niggas was losing their jobs. Nothing was certain. It, they was trying to figure out this whole uh, illegal download thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. you know, and it was everybody was, was, was panicking. And so I remember, man, getting flew to New York three times to meet with labels. We RCA flew us out. And they paid for us to stay and meet with other labels because they were so confident they was going to get us. The head of RCA, white dude, I don't even know his name, but uh, he was like the head of BMG too. Uh, he came in and put hats on our heads. It was like, nah, fuck that. Y'all signing with us. They bought us products for, our birth for my birthday. Uh, big ass cake. I'm talking about, this was back when they were courting artists. Yeah. You know, I, we hit the tail end of all of that shit. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we had all of that happen, all of that just aligning for us. 
moving fast. Like when I tell you it was just different, like most people, they like, I had to come up from my basement. I was recording yeah. in mama's basement. It wasn't no dungeon family story. This was like some like fairy tale shit. Yeah. You know? And then what happened? I think um I think for us, man, we had too many entities involved in what we was doing, bro. We was going to meetings with like 30 people. Cause not only was we signed to Noontime, we was also signed to Spin Cow, which is Demetrius Spencer. Who you know? Wait, so y'all had y'all had multiple okay. But y'all and I didn't know you? Bro, I knew you. <laughs> bro, I knew you. <laughs> bro, you're in my circle. Yeah. Right. Yeah, bro, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, I knew you before I knew you, you know? And like like I'm saying, from fooling around, that's when we... Because honestly, from from um, I Deserve, we didn't know you could sing like that. Then yeah. we heard fooling around and you hit that other gear on that, the mm -hmm. bridge. Yeah. We was like, this nigga is the greatest. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. That we've never... You, you saying Demetrius, you saying Terry Ross and Noontime, like... That's impossible that we wouldn't have been around each other at that time, but I yeah. get it. I get it. Nah, like I'm telling you, man, we we performed. I remember remember performing, uh, doing a showcase in Atlanta for LA Reed, because one of our songs on our demo was like his favorite song. He couldn't stop playing it. And um so we performed at this club. I forgot what the club was called, but this was back when Sierra was in this group called Hearsay. She performed, um, uh, this other group that New Time had performed, but we we came to shut it down, dog. I was jumping off stage. I was wild, like, nigga. I'm talking about. We gave that. We tore that whole shit up, and um, L.A. Reid went to sign us, man. And then it was like infighting because the A&Rs that brought us in, uh, another A&R had saw us before them. Fuck it, I'll say it. It was K.P. and um, Daryl Jones and Ty V. Ty V and Daryl Jones really loved us, and they're the ones that flew us to LA. But KP saw us before anybody. So then it was like, this was what the story that was told to us was, you know, LA was like, man, y'all ain't finna cause turmoil between my team. But I also think they was trying to get other artists off with us in a package deal, which, you know. I've been there. Yeah. Been there. So for whatever reason, that didn't happen. And uh, we went back to square one, man. And so y'all never signed with a major? We did. We signed with MCA. The MC okay. So we, how does how does that end up happening? Um we From we the up, same kind of doing the rounds. And yeah, yeah. Um and and this I forgot this dude named Darren Chandler. He was Dame Dash's cousin. Mm -hmm. Um he was straight hardcore New York nigga. He was like, yo, y'all niggas is the greatest beat. And I'm going to make sure y'all get to what y'all fucking need to be. Everything was this, this, yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, that nigga talking that shit. <laughs> he know. He that nigga it. know. That nigga talking that shit. <laughs> that nigga know. Yeah. And plus, I was, he reminded me of Payton Fool. I was like, man. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this nigga, we got to go with this nigga. So we ended up signing the MCA. And to his credit, man, he did, he did what he said he was going to do. But... The urban department end up folding, shutting down. Like how they everywhere we went, even RCA urban department shut down. This is this is real music business this story is though. Real, yeah. Yeah, this is people don't understand that it takes a lot of things to happen, a lot of luck, mm -hmm. a lot of being at the right place at the right time to actually get the success that you're going for. Yep. A lot of things have to align for you. No matter how talented you are, yep. no matter how good the music is, whatever these things are, departments fold, mm -hmm. people get fired, you got people who had issues with each other that you have nothing to do with. It's so much of this that goes on in the music business, and that's why your story is so important because it's also a story of staying true to it and really staying the course of wanting to have a career in music. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because all the things that you're saying, 99% of the people would have been like, man, I'm cool. I'm cool off the music business. I'm, I'm out. I don't want to do this no more at all. There was nothing else for me, bro. I didn't go to prom. I was, when my school was going to prom, I was in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I didn't even care about it. Now it was like, I want to say, I do regret not right, going right. to prom. You know what I mean? 
But prom you know, wasn't that cool. I mean, I went. It just, but just to be able to say I went to prom, you know I'm what I mean? I'm sorry to my prom date, but like, it's, it's, it's prom, <laughs> was it? Like, I went to my girlfriend's prom. Yeah. I went to everybody else's prom. Yeah. Yeah, I never went to my prom. They would have they, I was the, girl, the girls would have fought at my school if I would have showed up there with somebody. Talk, talk, yeah. 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 Talk, yeah. talk, yeah. talk, I couldn't go to my old prom. Tell them who you was. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You but, still look the same, dog. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Crazy. But yeah. I, I get exactly though what you, what you're saying though, bro. Like, and like I said, that's why your that's why your story is so important because you've worked your ass off, yeah, to sustain yourself in this business. That is not an easy feat at all. And obviously, we all have to learn how to pivot. People don't also know how to pivot in this game either. Like, you can't still be shopping the same demo from when you were 16. The music got to be different. Some got to be, you know what I mean? Or maybe you've learned music production. Maybe, hey, and maybe listen, you're a great photographer. Niggas is shopping the same demo mentally, too. Mm, mm, speak on that's it. That's great. Speak on it. That's great. You can't be shopping the same demo mentally, bro. Yeah. You're not in those times. Right. And I think that what you're saying, I received that, bro. And and that's absolutely me because i never been the most gifted. You know what I mean? My shit come off of sheer determination mm -hmm. you know and understanding remaining a student and that's one thing i'll be wanting to tell people like they be asking for advice and stuff and i just be like man i learn from you just like you learn from me always be a student bro that's how i learned that shit from for real that's how he's able to move the way he moved and niggas talk about he was alive in the 1800s and <laughs> he a vampire and all that nah he just remained a student yeah. And he has no ego in this shit. In the creative process, ego, there's no room for ego. Mm -hmm. So now you're out of the MCA deal. That folds. How old are you at this point? Because now we, we kind of started from you getting in groups. Mm -hmm. Like, what is this What is this timeline as far as how many years you've put in now chasing the group dream and the artist dream? Um. So my group dream had, like, Two different lives, man. Um, but by the time we lost that uh, MCA deal, it was like 03, I think. Um, and then we ended up just parting ways with Noontime and them. Um, just because we just didn't feel like they had our best interest mm -hmm. um, at that time. But I still love Terry, man. Like, Terry gonna always be my dog, you know. Yeah. Um, but from him, we ended up moving over and working with Walter Millsap. Hey. Yeah, yeah, a little walk. Yeah, yeah man. So, are man. you writing these songs yet, or no? Nah. And this is the thing, bro. Um, and shout out to y'all. Remember Dave Young? Yes, sir. Come here, man. Yes, sir. You, 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 why do you keep asking the authorities <laughs> on all things R and B? Hey, bro. Do we know people? I just got to check R and B. I just got to check yeah. because if I'm not sure about something, I'm gonna ask questions, bro. Absolutely. Yeah, listen, I, 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 get respect it. That. I get it. I respect I, I, that. I, it, it ain't no slight at <laughs> you, my 100%. boy. One hundred percent. I know your. I, we know who I know, Dave Young is, bro. I know your lineage. Yeah. You ain't got to do that with me, bro. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, no, Dave Young wrote. Like the majority of our demos that and stuff. On fire. Yeah, yeah. On fire. And I learned a lot from him. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, so I just want to shout him out and give him his flowers. But after we left that situation, we left all of that and even my management, because I didn't even tell y'all we was managed by three people. We was managed by my mom. I got three managers. Too. Yes. Okay. My mom. Yeah, I was TGT. Oh, nigga. <laughs> oh, nigga. When I when I tell you, bro. <laughs> What do we do to you, Jeff? <laughs> what do we do to deserve these strays? <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all gonna have to discuss that amongst yourselves. <laughs> so hey, that amongst, we amongst we yourselves. laugh about this shit all the time. Oh, yeah, we laugh about that's this shit all the time. Yeah. yeah, so we had my mom, Dave Scott, mm -hmm. which was the choreographer. Who we know, absolutely. Yeah, we know Dave Scott. The legend and, himself. And um, Keisha Gamble. Um, and we called her Nunu. And that was like, that was our management team. So you mm -hmm. could see why we was rolling up in meetings with 30 people. Y'all got three managers. Y'all got Four two. Four niggas in the group. Two production teams. Two production teams. Four group And they got all they niggas with them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just a... It's too many yeah, It's a nigga fest. big enough. It's room a, room big it's enough. It's a nigga fest. And the just imagine... fest. <laughs> and just imagine you having to 
meet with that as an A&R or as an executive, you're like, man. What the fuck is going man. on? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we didn't see that. We just was like, oh, we got an entourage. We them y'all niggas. Had, y'all you were know? already too much. They said they, said they better than the Temptations and Bird and the Midnight Falcons <laughs> put together. <laughs> Bro. My, man, y'all had too much going on. Bro, so yeah, um, I did I mention that Janae's brother was in my group? No, you didn't. Janae, Janae Eichel's brother was in my group. That's how I know Janae. Got gotcha. you. I've known Janae since she was twelve. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, her brother Jahi was in my group. Man, he was half halfway game banging, halfway R and B. I love you, cuz. Yes, <laughs> I love you, cuz. <laughs> I'm hood, <laughs> but but we know what it was. That nigga was smoking before anybody was smoking. He what was. What you a, doing over there? It's called smoking, nigga. Yes, nigga. He was smoking at eleven. That nigga was. He was that nigga though. Different, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we would roll up with all these uh, entities. Skip all that. We uh, we end up working with um, Walter Millsap, and uh, we end up doing some demos with him. We work with Harold Lilly. Yeah, his, uh, y'all Can- working with all the best people, bro. They they had everything. Candace, Candace Nelson, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. bro. We had, well, we had all of it, the best of the best, bro. I just think that that wasn't the path that God had for us. Right, it's absolutely that. that's all you know it, it can't be. That's all it is. Yeah, um, and then you know, after that, we ended up working with Tug, and that's how people know. But like. Trey and Jai, he had a long-standing re- like relationship with Chris Stokes because mm-hmm. they they was in the R&B. He had that m- boy band factory of over course. there. You know what I mean? Um, so we ended up um, signing with TUG. Um, I ended up like, we were supposed to do an album. We were supposed to do a lot of things, but they were like, I don't want to get on here bashing nobody, um, but they just didn't want to put us out. Mm-hmm. They wanted us to piggyback off of niggas. Like, we need y'all. We need to get them hot for y'all to get hot. I'm like... Nigga, they're already hot. Marcus Houston and Omarion, they're already hot. Yeah. Let us cook. But I um I ended up going on Scream Tour, singing background for them. That was a dope experience, you know. I know it was. I I I, I know I, it was. It was one of the best experiences of my life, to Did be honest. Did you use with you. your laminate for good or evil? Boy. Evil. When I t- <laughs> boy, when I tell you him, him right here. Evil. Boy, when I tell you <laughs> that the ass, brother. This one right here? It was like How'd you use the it was like brother? they let the dog out the kennel because you gotta you gotta know before <laughs> before I before I went on tour on the screen tour nigga I was living in Compton sleeping on a floor in my group member's house and his mom thank you so much Mama Tina I love you for life for this she let me stay there for like mm-hmm. two years Shit. with oh, my wow. group member rent free I would give her something whenever when I had it but yeah. she let me stay there to figure it out I went from sleeping on floors with my boy us sharing. Top ramen and all that, you know what I mean? At his to, mama house. At his mama house to yeah. to going on tour. Wow. And now how old are you at this point? At this point, I'm 21. You're like 21, okay. So I'm like... So this is college for you pretty much. Yeah. This is, yeah. This is my college. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is my college, man. And when I tell you it was the greatest experience, I feel like every male should just experience something like that. The, every male should experience the scream to it. That's, yeah, that's, something that's like it. Something like it. I don't it. think At most niggas gonna like ever experience they that. Time. Not, yeah, listen, but, if you but, get a chance. but here, but here, but <laughs> here, it, here it is because it's one of them things that you could be like, you know, niggas be like, man, I done did that. Our Bundy days. <laughs> yeah. Now, listen, yeah. my college was the my college was the Budweiser Superfest in '97 with Drew Hill, Genuine, Aaliyah, Mary J. Oh, Blige, come on, and Bone Thugs and Harmony. Mm-hmm. At oh. your age, at that 21 age. Come and on. I was just like, I'd never seen anything like it before in my life. And my laminate, my laminate, let's go. Did you used to be on time? Was you making lo- lobby call? Bro, I, oh, I, I was, oh, was you making lobby call, bro? Nah. Was, no, uh, you was that guy? Nah. Hate niggas like you, bro. I was no. early. I the, but this is I'll be I, ready to kick niggas like you off tour. <laughs> but 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 to my defense, man, um, I just you know they wasn't gonna kick me off tour because I was a part of the you right. know what I mean. Right. It, it, it wasn't like I was just terribly late, but like you know, no, you can't be late, bro. I know. Listen, I, I know that I'm listen. 21, bro. You <laughs> speaking to the inner child. I was, I was, I was genuine's valet. <laughs> 
So I had to be <laughs> you, there. You was at the door before he got and up? And make sure things were in yeah, line. Yeah, you know the door about to open in five minutes. So when Genuine gets there, I, we'd be able to receive it. Genuine's on the way. I, he's coming right We'd now, be so. able to receive it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, my laminate. Yeah. Listen, was you, you was on tour with a nigga they called The Wine. The, the wine. The wine. The pony man. AKA the pony man. I, the bachelor himself. The bachelor himself. Yeah. And whatever he didn't want, <laughs> I did. Yes. And I'm sure it was falling off the side of the table. It was falling off the uh, I'm you just, I'm singing backgrounds for genuine and Aaliyah. Come on. And I know you had one of them shirts on where you had your chest out. I wore what genuine wore. <laughs> If he had a silk shirt from Oak Tree, I wore a silk shirt from Oak Tree. <laughs> Ten you on. Ten. Ten you on. <laughs> you got nine o'clock, you got five o'clock. <laughs> Cause, go most, Cause most <laughs> artists don't let you wear what they wear. No, most artists don't no. let you wear what they wear. They put you in black oh, you or white. <laughs> you in black <laughs> or white. It was, it was Which black. one you was in? It was, it was black. Uh, we Gen was in white. He was in white. It was yeah. black. Genuine was letting me cook though. <laughs> but it's like that. But I think that experience is, um, it's priceless. Mm -hmm. For me as an artist, that experience was priceless. Like and. Mm -hmm. I got to be on tour with the kind of artists that desired for me to, shine. to be successful. Yeah. And to shine. Mm, yeah. So that every day they were pouring to me, telling me what I needed to do. Now I don't do that. Do this. And then, oh. when you get up there, I'm going to make sure I'm going to, and then do that. They gave you crazy. a name. Bro, this is why I say I was born t 10 years too late. Because I would have loved to be a, uh, an adult in the 90s, bro. In the business in the nineties, it was well, just different. You, it, it was. It was different. It was. I, 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 I can't even deny it because I got the last little bit. I got in at ninety six. Oh man, that was perfect so, though. I got the last little bit of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. But them early two thousands. Yeah. It was heavy. Oh, they was they was they was heavy, but um, as far as like the business goes, the business was getting fucked up. It started. It started. It started. Yeah, no, it, it did. I mean, I think people trying to figure out where it was going yeah. and then how to rob, the new yep. how to rob, yep. mm -hmm. right? Yep. Because obviously the the business is built on robbery. Yeah, right. It's always been since the beginning of time. You read your goddamn contracts. Yeah, um, yeah. But when Napster came in, good old Napster, they were getting robbed. Mm -hmm. So they were like, okay, where do, where, where do we where do we figure out how to get back into this power position? So they start just cutting shit. Oh, this costs too much. That costs too much. But then as they're doing that, they're realizing how to get back into the power position with streaming. Streaming. But they realized that years later. No, they, they realized it earlier than people thought. Mm -hmm. They were just trying to figure out how to make the business tricky because uh, yeah, streaming yeah, yeah, yeah. is actually really transparent you can literally go see what the numbers are yeah, yeah. we could never see the numbers before yep. straight up right yeah we just ran the numbers up because like you were saying we was just getting we was on we was on corporate accounts and we was just getting you know moved around we didn't know what these things actually cost yeah streaming um and the internet now made it one click away to find out where the money was going, how it was coming in. Mm -hmm. But the labels figured out that they would do deals with these platforms mm -hmm. that were directly for them. Yep. But they could really eat again and do more again stealing. And, again. And, do, and do more stealing. Yep. Or not even stealing because it's right there in your contract. Your contract. What you said. It's in your contract. You just don't got, you don't, you just, if you don't want to, you just don't sign that motherfucker. Yeah, but then you know you got the the alternative to not signing that yeah. motherfucker is yeah real life. So we, yeah, so we we almost forced to right. We almost forced to we take force that. ourselves to. Well, you think you think? I mean, I know you thought this way, and I thought this way when I signed my deal. <clears throat> um, this is cool, but I'm gonna be somewhere I'm else be, in a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So yeah. that is the that is the mindset. Yes. Yep. Yes. I'm gonna beat this deal up. Like when yep. I got my first publishing I'm gonna deal. Go through this. So that's it. Five songs, and they tried to hit me with a hundred percent compositions. Oh my like god! Like that was a like that was a scary thing for me. I said, "No problem. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you soon." Yeah. So for me, like all of those things. None of it scared me. I signed my first record deal without going to a lawyer. Fool. Yeah. I don't recommend <laughs> yeah. anyone sign I didn't manage his first him. record deal. I didn't manage him then. without going to a lawyer. Thank God it turned it turned out turned out to be a good deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't a bad deal. Um but Hey man, there's something to be said about that. That's how much confidence so, I had in myself. You you've always been a mover though. That's one thing I I picked up from you and I and I watch you and I learn from you is that you don't do it too much talking. You're gonna you gonna do it? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Work, well because of the ultimately it's all work driven, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? At the end of the day, which as we get to with you, right? Okay, these deals that don't seem to be working out, groups that don't seem to be working out. You at some point say, "How can I really be of value? How can I be of value to this business and then ultimately to myself?" And when do you make that switch? Because then you now you're not just an artist anymore. Now you're a curator of of artists and what mm -hmm. they're trying to do and the stories that they're trying to tell and the career that they're trying to have yeah. when do you make the switch and and realize that you're valuable in that space when i stopped listening to niggas tell me just focus on being an artist hmm. when i knew all along that i could write these songs and i could write better songs than niggas was doing for us hmm. um and to the group stuff just it just wasn't popping and I saw, like, that was around the time that, um, Neo and Dream, like, writers was turning Cook. into full-on artists. artists. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, man, let me try my hand at this route. Um, th so I started getting in and just, you know, writing stuff. I Some of my first songs I, were for Janae um, back when she was, like, trying to figure her thing out. Um, me and her would just go in and just be writing. And that was, like, school for me. You know, um, and then I started getting, I started hearing other people's stuff. I started hearing other other people get off, you know, um, people like Fonleroy, um, who else? Andre Merritt. Um, hey, Merritt yeah. was a, was my yeah. guy. Okay. Yeah. yeah, like they was having runs. Yes, and yeah. I remember. Um, so I I had to get a job, and I started working as a car salesman. <laughs> at, Don't laugh. Uh, Huh? Don't laugh. No, it's funny. Yeah. It, it's funny to me because I have a vivid picture in my mind of me S being a car tie? salesman. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And going to this going to this car lot every day, knowing good and goddamn well, I'm not supposed to be here. But I'm like, you know what? I gotta do what I gotta do. Yeah. And, and we in Simi Valley. And you know how hot Simi Valley gets. As soon as somebody get on that lot, you gotta get up. Go get themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I did decent at it. You did all right? Yeah, but the thing that was killing me was I was I was working deals and hearing the homies music being played over the uh mm. you know mm. the yeah. songs that I knew the homies wrote. Right. And I'm like, I'm talking I'm talking about tears. I would go to the bathroom and, and cry mm. because I felt like I blew my shot. I'm here. How did I get here? Mm -hmm. You know? Because that it's that competitive thing in me. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Nah, I know I'm one of them ones. I know I gotta get that. I know I know what I can do. So I ended up um I ended up getting fired from that job. I got fired from every job that I I, I was part of. But um Why do you think that is, brother? Because I don't <laughs> It's, it's not a I ain't supposed to be it's not here. a destination. It's not a destination. It's just a pit but stop. You don't have to get fired though, Micah. I do. I do <laughs> because God is like you not gonna leave you say I, you, see, you hear me God. I've never had a job so I don't I'm like you I'm over here talking about yeah how to, yeah, how to right. keep right. one yeah, yeah. Like, I've never had one yeah. talk, Michael, I don't this, even know I don't even know what to do to get one Mike just me you talk yeah. he don't, you, don't, he no, don't got no don't talk no to him. W9 talk on to me, fire man. I get it talk to me so, I got fired so I end up I see and look you look like a nigga that got fired before why why 
Why? Because you look, you. it's like me, bro. You got a one track mind, bro. Here I am when trying, you, to, be, <laughs> trying to be with you. I'm actually bigging you up right now, bro. I'm actually <laughs> bigging you up. Not. I would have fired both of you <laughs> niggas. <laughs> you definitely would have, dog. For my <laughs> uncle company. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely, bro. I, I got fired from that job and I was like, no, nah, this is my time to really turn up. So God had blessed me with another job that was flexible. Okay. Like, when I talk about flexible, what the most flexible, I was mentoring kids and working in group homes. Got gotcha. you. Mm. Gotcha. And, mm -hmm. and I was doing it on weekends. That job was so flexible, it allowed me to still move how I wanted to move and be in the studio and, and do those things until I, I got fired from that. And then that was like the last job I ever had. Um, and God has be, blessed me and sustained me to be able to move through this business and take some bumps and losses, but like, for real, like, still be so here. give me the moment. Give me the moment. Okay, we fired probably from taking the kids to an adventure you hadn't signed them out on. Yeah. Um, probably. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're fired. You need a moment, right? Mm -hmm. You need a defining moment that says one of two things. One, I can do this. And two, here is the either success or revenue to prove it what moment is that when i got my first placement my first actual um that moment was for me it won't stop the record was seven mm -hmm. was that uh, your first record no, it wasn't my first record, but it was like my it was my first of, yeah, like, it was yeah. my first record. I'm like that, I knew you before that. Yeah, yeah, it was my first record that charted. Right, okay. you know what I mean. Um, if you want to talk about when I thought I was gonna arrive, it was the the Drake song I did. Um, I did a song called July, um, which was I originally did it with Janae. With Janae, and he heard the song because uh, my boy Jazz who was rocking with us, he took it over to Drake. It was like, man, I'm telling you, you got to get on this. Mm -hmm. He was trying to get him as a feature. Drake was like, nah, I want this song for me. I yeah. didn't know you wrote that. Yeah. Um, so he ended up doing um, doing verses on it, singing my, uh, with, uh, Janae was on the hook. I ended up seeing him at Chris, remember Chris and Polo used to have them um, skate parties. parties. Yeah. yeah. It was going up. Um, I ended up seeing him at the skate party and he stopped me. He was like, yo, congratulations. And I'm like, what's good? He like, yo, we're going to get Beyonce on July and we're going to put it out. And I'm like, word. All right, cool. Just make sure let's do the business. Like I try to play him cool, but in my heart, I was like, oh, this, yeah, is, no, it's time. this is, is this yeah, is my it. moment. I've arrived. Yeah. This is my moment. Yeah. So, and at that time, me and Drake was, uh, uh, like remember uh it wasn't FaceTime, it was like uh iChat. Yeah. We was yeah, yeah. I we was yeah, iChatting yeah. ideas mm -hmm. back and forth and on BBM. He was on BBM heavy. Um so like three months go by, I get a I get a get in touch with G and Hip Hop. They like, yeah, we using the record, we doing all this. Then one day the record just leaks. And it's getting played on Hot 97 and all these radio stations and it and I'm like, huh? This was supposed to be the Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. So I hit him and I'm like, yo, bro, what happened? How did the record get leaked? And all he had for me was, I know, it's shitty. And then a few months later, he comes out with, was it that album, that hard, that, the crazy album, Thank Me Later? Mm -hmm. And there's a song called Fireworks on there. I'm not insinuating anything, but I'm just like, that, I'm just being transparent with you. I was fucked up by that because I felt Fireworks. like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I and I and I would tell everybody about this song that I got coming. And niggas was like, oh yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And um shout out my boy Diesel. He he paid for the session for that song. Um Diesel? Yeah. And yeah, and my boy my boy Diesel Sticks. Cool my boy Sticks recorded that song for us. Y'all know Sticks? Watch Sticks. Watch Sticks? Yeah. You have to, you have to, uh, if you do, you don't do it again. one more, y'all know do one, don't you about do it niggas that's again. our friends. Sticks right. is my right. friend. You're right. My real Stop. life friend. Right. Not right. my industry friend. You're right. That's my friend. You're right. You're right. Stop it, bro. This is the one place where assum assumptions are allowed. Okay. I get fuck, it. You <laughs> assumptions are allowed here. All right, cool, cool, cool. I got you. It won't happen again, boss. <laughs> <I> swear. <laughs> uh, so, so the record leaks. So, so the record leaks and I still get paid royalties from that song. It ain't like a, But that's a, how big an artist Drake is. Yeah, yeah right. that's what's crazy. We never did no splits, no nothing for it. Um, but 
yeah, after him doing that, it really put a real bitter taste in my mouth for um, the the mu- music industry. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I felt like that was some industry shit, you know? But it could have been something that was out of his control. I know. Right? You know? I, and, 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 and and now, looking in hindsight, I consider all things, right? right. But back then, you I didn't, just you was- You didn't consider none of that. Yeah, because that could have changed my life. Yeah. That for that sure. that could have been life changing for me because as, I yeah. I can't tell you how many people I know when they find out I did that song or they they like that's one of my favorite songs. I don't have many songs as many songs as a lot of people out here, but the songs that I do have, so many people tell me that that is one of their favorite songs. Yeah, yeah. And I'll take that any day, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so you're saying from from that song, even though it didn't turn out the way. You hoped it would. The seven record is the one yeah. that actually gave you everything that you needed to get from it. Which absolutely. Is, which is absolutely my shit. A- absolutely. Wow. And sure it wrong. came out twice. Because originally yeah, 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 it didn't yeah, have Chris yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Yep. So that 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 record dropped in. I'm just like Who produced that? Um so these guys that uh John Baptiste had um, mm-hmm. They were like some French dudes. Okay, I forget their name now, and that's terrible. Oh, they were no, they were signed to Diplo. Okay, okay. So okay. Diplo's name is on the credits. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that to me, that just was such a. Um, you know how you do certain records, and you like, I'm just doing this for them. I'm not attached to this record like mm-hmm. that. It's just for them. I do this in my sleep. That record was one that was like spiritual, because <clears throat> I can tell you, I went in that booth. And the first things I did was the song. Yeah. I'm talking about from dun 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 and then the and it won't dun dun I scattered all that on the first time. And that's how I, that's when I know God is in the room. Yeah. Yeah. And we was like, nah, we're right into that. You know how you go, somebody else go in and do melodies. Right, 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 right. And, we, we, yeah, we, it was like, we got it already. They we was like, nope, we got it. Yeah. We yeah. got it. And so me and Sev went in on that record man and what's crazy is that session ty ty dollar sign called me to come to that session because he wasn't gonna be able to make it oh shit so i kind of like filled in for ty dollar sign right that is great you know what i mean yeah and and you delivered and i delivered and that ended up being like uh we worked a a, like a week we did a a couple different records but Mm -hmm. that was my first time really locking in with sev i had knew her before that Mm -hmm. but never really locked in with her like that and that started our relationship where that's like my musical wifey like every time we go in it's it's crazy yeah so when you get this record and it's finally popping you know we know the phone calls that come and the meetings that come mm-hmm. you know would you would you like to do a co-pub oh uh, yeah. you'd like to <clears throat> how can we help because at this point you haven't done a deal yet no, I did. Oh, you had already done one? I had, sure. I had already had a deal. You done uh, a deal? By then. I, did, I did my deal with UNPG. Okay. Mm. Yeah. 2011. Oh. And then... It, Shout it out Lindsay Lanier. It won't stop, don't come out till when? That was like uh, t- uh, 2013. Okay. Yeah, does, shout out to Lindsay. That's my Does this song get yeah. you out of your deal? No. Because I was in an antiquated deal, which was um, based on... You know the fine print. It's got to be. You got a three song commitment, but it got to be on an album, a domestic album at that, mm-hmm. and it can't be an EP. And this was around the time when all niggas was doing was EPs was EP. and mixtapes, and yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I I had to like yeah I I I got that deal amended, but I, it, around that time it was just an antiquated deal. But I, I honestly, man, but I the royalties came to you though. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Um, and I didn't, I didn't even worry about that stuff, man. I, I really just wanted to like cement my name and my legacy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so, um, I was working with everybody, man. I went in with Chris. Um, this was like years before it won't stop. Um, uh, when, when Chris had that thing with Rihanna, um, we, dang, that was bad. When Chris had that thing with Rihanna, he kind of was just, you know, locked himself in the studio. And I was like one of the dudes that was in. The studio with him, working on working on that mixtape. We did a song called "Talk That Shit." Um, I did a song called "Go Away," which was on the um, the deluxe album of Graffiti. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and shout out to Chris, man, because I learned a lot about writing working with him too. Yeah, I learned learned a lot about like you know 
staying locked in and and focusing and relentlessly. Yeah, locked in once he's in the booth and it's time to work. Yeah, like if you machine, in the room, we like, working. You working, and until yeah. the song is finished, we in here. Yeah, like and it listen. You better have your lyrics and your melodies dialed up. Yeah, and ready to go. Yeah, cause it's gonna go by fast. Yeah, you yeah. moving fast. Yeah, it's gonna that's, go by fast. That's where I really first learned that that style of of writing. He don't second guess himself. Yeah, yeah. You going in there scatting melodies and then writing to the melodies and stuff. Before that, I hadn't really like wrote like that, but that that actually like was a a great tool mm -hmm. because I am a melody guy. Right. I it takes me a long time to come up with certain lyrics um, because sometimes I overthink. Sometimes I just want everything to read out poetically mm -hmm. and all that. But like, um, nah. I, I I had to I had to learn that too. He writes more in a rapper space mm. for R and B than he does like in an R and B space, especially mm -hmm. now. Yeah, like he's not like once you I guess once you figure out you're really good at something, like overthinking it is just it's it's not an option. Yeah, it's not an option. Yeah. These lyrics and these melodies are good, um, and, and we don't even I don't even think like last time I wrote with him we didn't even go through melodies. Mm -hmm. He was in the booth, and he would sing something. I'd be like, ooh, that's fire. Yep. Say this word. Or, oh, make that note this. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. keep going. And that's, that's it. Oh, niggas, is niggas have mastered it. That's it. And, and the thing is, I, I feel like there's a, there's a difference between writing and communicating. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because when you're communicating, his audience, he knows how to communicate to 100%. his audience. 100%. You know? And some, for better or worse, man, like some people get mad that he puts 36 songs on an album and all of that, <clears throat> but he's just emptying the clip. I'm going to tell you also. And communicating. It's it's not even just that. He's one of the rare artists who learned the business early, mm -hmm. who understood where the business was going early yeah. and understood that not only am I going to play the music game or good music game for that matter. I'm gonna play the numbers game. Mm. I'm gonna play the numbers game because mm -hmm. by the time you listen to all of these songs, that will count for two sales. <laughs> right. But he, uh, but not to not street. to like harp on on Chris Brown, but it it does go to speak to artistry, right? Yeah. Because I like to believe that you're either an artist or an entertainer, and he's one of the ones that have learned oh. how to straddle that line mm -hmm. between being an artist and an entertainer and either one no, nobody's wrong in mm -hmm. what you choose just understand what, what, what comes with either one yeah, yeah. you know so yeah. he's mastered that give me another moment where you're <clears throat> where you where you pound on your chest and you say I'm him oh man it, it's been it's been a, a great journey man um, I like to say uh, I mean supposed to be yeah, talk of, come on don't be scared of yeah. it yeah Supposed to be because you know, and by I who? and I gotta be, uh, huh? By who? By Omarion featuring Chris Brown and Janae Aiko. Yeah, yeah um, that was my first top ten um, record, and it's funny that it would be with Omari. <laughs> right. And I know he, I'm pretty sure he thinks the same way. Yeah. Like we've been knowing each other more than we haven't known each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but man, that line. That infamous line. The groceries. Yes. Yes. I've learned to be proud of it. Why? You I, felt away for a minute? I felt away because I'm an artist, right? And I'm like, man, that line is so remedial and so dumb. It's so ratchet. You know, like that. Whenever people would introduce me, they'd be like, you know that line, eat the booty like groceries? Yeah, he wrote that. Instead of like, you know that song, this song or that song or that song. It's to eat the booty like groceries that I would get introduced as. Niggas was calling me the ghetto Kama Sutra, bro. Like, it's just, <laughs> I, I, nigga, you want to be known for something? But, it's but something cool, yeah. Shit. But then when people go, oh, so you be eating booty? <laughs> then it becomes like it's 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 it's, it's, it's too much. <laughs> no, people take it far, and so I'm like, for a long time, it bothered me. But I've learned to accept it. I've learned to embrace it because it did like impact culture. You know what I mean? And that's and that's not no one dive too much into your business. But it won't stop. We got it. Fire. Super crazy. But supposed to be. Those checks get a little different. Oh man. You know. Hmm. You have to pause and think about that. Mm hmm Nah, because it's not what you think. <laughs> Bro, we still haven't settled on that record. 
What do you mean? Bro, we still haven't signed off on that record. This what? this is this there, there can be a whole nother podcast on this song alone. Um just as far as the the fuckery around it, you know. Um So the writers couldn't agree. Well, because it's so many entities involved and I, I'm gonna put it in short. What happened was we did the record with O. Me and Sam wrote the main the the first verse and the hook. You and Sam Hook. Me and Sam Hook. Shout out my brother Sam Hook. We wrote the first verse and the hook. Omari needed a feature on it. And I'm I'm keeping it real with y'all. I don't even care. Omari needed a feature on it. So they um were like, who should we get on the record? Chris was doing his thing at that time. I think he had uh uh, these hoes ain't loyal or something Chris like that Chris. out, yeah. Yeah. and so it it was popping. So he's like, "Man, I'm gonna take it to Chris." Mm -hmm. He takes it across the uh, across town to Chris, unbeknownst to us though. Like we we weren't there at the session, so they do whatever they do on the record. They write the second verse and they write that uh, bridge part. All right, cool. Then Janae wants. Uh, then he's like, it's the. the uh, uh, Atlantic is like it's still not enough we need another artist on it so they go Janae let's get Janae Janae wants me to write something for her along the lines of eating booty because she said the poster reminded her of Kevin Gates when he used to say I eat the booty like I'm poster <laughs> so, so that's okay. what I, I right. love all of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. That, that okay. So that's I love that. so that's where that line came from, and, and how me and Janae work is sometimes we will go in the studio, <laughs> but sometimes she'll be like, she'll be like, can you can you write something for me? Because mm -hmm. she just don't feel like it, right. or you know. Yeah. And I know her. She be busy. So, she, yeah, yeah. So I did that verse in my living room, and I just was like, it just was so simple as what rhymes were supposed to be. Mm -mm -mm. Groceries. Oh groceries put that down and it, I was like oh this shit actually goes yeah. and they loved it everybody loved it she recorded it and that's how you have it's no longer toss a salad it's eating groceries now. yeah <laughs> um so great job <laughs> great job I did what I was supposed to do yeah yeah um so we have all of these entities involved on top of that we have the producers mustard and Mike free who are in an entanglement with their deal and kind of like you know trying to figure some things out mm -hmm. then you got Shaka Demis who is the song is an interpolation of that's right then we got that okay so all these entities involved oh and not to mention we tried they tried somebody tried to sue us someone else said they wrote it it was a, they said it sounded like a song, but the song was a Chris Brown song. Okay. So he, in essence, he can't sue himself. He's on the record. So the, that's, that got thrown out. Mm -hmm. So at this, at this point, we're at, I think we were at like 125%. And we got to get down for those that don't know about publishing. We got to get down to 100. So, just, you know, how R&B money does business. Mm -hmm. The sample would take their piece. Uh -huh. And then everybody else would split it evenly. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are some who might have, may have done more work than others. But once the sample comes in and starts chipping away, the first thing is people are going to argue... Well, I ain't had nothing to do with the sample. Yep. Or I ain't. Yep. But none of it is what it is. Without it. Without it. Exactly. So, so whether whether you were part of introducing that nuance or not, it's a major part of the success of the song. Yeah. When I heard that, I said, oh, shit. No, they didn't. Mm -hmm. Immediately. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So... It's so much, there's so much success on the song that there's enough success to go around for everybody. For everybody. Let the interpolation of the sample have their piece and everybody split it evenly. Yeah. And we get that money that's just sitting there collecting interest 
for everyone else to use because that's the other part people aren't paying attention to. That interest, oh, that's being used. Oh, yeah. It's they, in, it's, they it, eat. I learned about something called a black box. Mm-hmm. And your money goes into a black mm-hmm. box, which which in turn is bonuses at the end of the year. Yep. Yep. So you mean to tell me? People are y'all covering black boxes? Off of y'all money. Off your money. Yes. This business is wicked, dog. Well, that's it, it is designed to be, right? But it don't have to but be. But it don't have to be. Yeah. Because the creatives have to do business. Yep. And that's the part that gets tricky with creatives. We, because I am a creative, mm-hmm. we get in our feelings instead of saying, you know what? We got to handle our business, though. Yeah. And yes, this could be a tricky conversation. Or you know what? Even I'll be the nigga that'll take less. Nigga, you're reading my mind. But here, So here's the thing. Here's yeah. This is the, the problem with going here, there, and everywhere to get your song done. We're not all in a room at the same time. Of course. So, so now, 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 lawyers and managers and you know, yeah, they're they're negotiating it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So everybody has an argument they can make, right? Mm-hmm. I could say, without the line I wrote, this song wouldn't have been what it what it is because he can't perform this song without doing that first. It's it's it becomes it becomes null and void. Exactly when nobody's getting paid from it. Exactly. I always, from the jump, wanted to do, let's just split it equal. Let's like not even nitpick over who get what. Let's just d- split it equal. It's too many entities involved. That's the I, That, to me, was the only uh, logical and reasonable solution. You know, but when you got people that are in their egos and don't really care about nobody but themselves, you got to understand you got producers that have... Well, I also think that sometimes relationships get a little weird, too. So that can create the rift in negotiations where it could be easier if everybody was cool with each other. Yeah, yeah. If everybody was in this yeah. great place where they at least talk once a month or something yeah. like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, because it turns into, I don't know, I don't know him. I don't yeah. know her. I don't yeah. know that nigga. And yeah, man, truth be told, man, it, it caused some resentment, you know, for me to certain people. And um, I mean, bro, that was 10 years ago. Can't take it personal. Yeah. And what you need to do is what you need to do is you should you should go to everyone personally. Oh, we 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 we're at we past that point. Like we we're doing all that. We we're setting up, you know, something right now. Um, but again, but without the like without the in betweens. Yeah, it's got to be everybody. It's got to be direct at one, conversation at one, at one time. Yeah. It's got to be hey man. 10 years in the making, man, this is what's happening. Mm-hmm. I've known you for this long. Mm-hmm. I've known you for this. I've known, We've been in the trenches for a long time. Can we get this done? This is what they're taking. This is what everybody's everybody's going to get. We're, we're, we're all equal here. I wrote a bunch of it. I don't care. I just want to get this done. I feel it's gonna you, take, It's going to take that, that kind of finesse. I feel you, dog. Take, and, and I'm, that ain't paperwork, legal jargon, none of that shit's yeah, yeah, yeah. gonna work. Yeah, and I'm I'm praying, you know, that that happens. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I'm still, you know, I've, I I got exhausted with it. You know what I mean. But I'm I haven't given up on on that. You know what I mean. So God gonna work that out in in His yeah. perfect timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another record you wrote, LMA, Shot Clock. Shot Clock. Yeah. Yeah. Really love that record, bro. Man, thank you. I really love Great that record. record. Bro. Thank you, man. Special record and very, once again, smart. It's mm. smart. It's, it's one of those you're like, oh, anybody can write that. No, they can't. Mm. Right? Because everybody, we all, when, when records drop, every writer, every artist, whatever, they always say, oh, anybody. No, 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 no. Well, you didn't. And maybe you couldn't have written it that cleverly and made it still cool because people write a lot of metaphor records. People mm-hmm. write a lot of double entendre records. Yeah. And they don't be cool though. Yeah. You just be saying a whole bunch of shit. Yeah. That record was really fucking cool and written really well. Man, thank you for saying that, Jay. Yeah, yeah I, I, that session was so dope, man. It was just me and Ella. We it it was like really simple, man. We went through some tracks that she liked. Uh, Shot Clock track that that track came up. It spoke to us. It was like, yeah, load that up. Yeah. It was another one of them things where I, first, what I like to do when I'm in with an artist is 
Have a conversation. Talk. Where where are you at in your life right yeah. now? Yeah. Not fuck the don't give me the glamorous shit. Yeah. I want to know like your pain. You don't got to go into detail, mm-hmm. but like let me know where you at with it. Yeah. So I can She's get so, so amazing I, that y'all wrote a record called Shot Clock. She's amazing. It's great. <laughs> so it's let me know cool. where you at with it so I could so I can meet you there. Yeah. You know? Um because generally what I what I do is that was great, Jay. I just want to double back to that. No, let that, that just go over. Wait, it went over my head. <laughs> no, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll talk about it after. Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So, so what I what I like to do and why people like think that I just am like a female song whisperer. I literally just be writing female songs from the standpoint of what I put women through, and and how they've communicated to me. Yeah. Yeah. But you're you know also I mean? co-written Pussy Fairy, too. <laughs> hey man. I told you when he got that laminate. You can't you can't control how, how God chooses to bless you. When what? he got that laminate, <laughs> shit went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, man. I get it. I get it. I get I it. Know this nigga. I get it. Hey, look, man. I know this nigga. Right really well for them, bro. You do. Yeah, I just do my job, good. bro. I, mean, I do yeah, I do good. I do my That's job. We'll call yeah. it. I do my job. So that was what were we talking about? Shot clock. <laughs> Tell about shot clock, brother. Shot it's clock, Janae, bro. man. I think she trolling me, low key. I mean, listen. <laughs> I'm at the concert. You pop up on the screen. I'm like, bro, it's just. I'm it's in great. the video. It's, it's great, bro. I I wasn't. That was that was my last. I retired from my video vixen days. After that, me too. Me too. Oh yeah. I'm retired. I'm retired. I changed my, my. I know you, nigga, I'm with retired. the white beater. I was a vixen before both of y'all. You were. Come on, dog. You were. You, you were. were. You were. For both of y'all. You were. No respect. As that's what dudes be saying over <laughs> <looking> there. <at>. Respect. <laughs> respect. <laughs> respect. 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 <laughs> yeah, man. Um. Now you've done you've done some really cool shit, bro. And then the one I want to get to, one we all did together. That's what we. That's what we need to talk about. The nigga, we getting here. Getting we here. Getting we here. Fucking with me. At the old studio, we have. We hold on, have, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I just yeah, want to yeah. give you a round of applause, man, because I didn't. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I did not believe you when you said you was gonna do what you did. You were doing the the Burt Bacharach records, your own words. You was like this this Barry Manilow shit. Mm-hmm. You was like I can't do this Barry Manilow shit. I'm finna turn up, mm-hmm. and I was like, he was there. Nah, he ain't finna turn up. He shouldn't. <laughs> he shouldn't. <laughs> he shouldn't. But he did, and he mm-hmm. did it so well, dog. You, your career needs to be because the studied. niggas are turn up in real life. He like he's a, he, this nigga's looking for a good time, Pro- man. Problem named me the turn up king. Yes, he was like, I don't know what these other niggas call you, <laughs> but you the turn up king. Yeah. Yes, nigga. And I think you know, again, you have to kind of be who you are. Like in, in order for people to truly, truly receive you, and as we talk about that record, I knew I knew what we felt like the record was, mm-hmm. but I didn't really know what that record was. Mm. Yeah, when I it performs, it has performed well and continues to perform well for me, right? But we missed that one. Yeah, we did. We did. We missed it. We missed that one. Mm. It angers me. It angers me that we didn't that we didn't fight like we fought for when we yep yep for fucking with me because that record if 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 you've ever seen me in concert right turned up that's really the only deep cut record you perform yes everything else bro, you I perform seen it. I seen season, him yeah. I seen him going crazy no, it, bro. It, it changes I seen I seen him going crazy yeah. it is a bro. it is a time when them guitars come on yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. shout out to my brother Cosign who came in and and did oh, 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 oh. you should do that right there real cool thank you <laughs> <laughs> we were talking one day he's like I'm so mad I didn't ask for publishing. <laughs> I said, "Well, man, you know you got you got to pick your battles, man. Yeah, you gotta, sometimes you just got to, you know, it's going to come back to you. It's going to come back yeah. to it's you. It's going to come back to you, bro. I, And listen, and and what we did was when we snatched a shout out to Silk. Yeah. Shout out to Silk. Yeah, yeah. Is that delight? 
I want to say that's the life's record. I feel like that's the life. Yeah. I feel like that's the life. Yeah. Um, we snatched all of it. A lot of it. Mm-hmm. But you did. You you made it. They made me. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Tell, kept, come on, come on, tell the story. So, <laughs> so you, see, you didn't know about didn't this. Know this. I didn't know. No, this. no, no. We had to do some more shit after and do some uh, shit. Yeah, they yeah. were trying to take so much of the record, and I was, and I kept going back and forth with the musicology. I changed mm-hmm. the record like two more times, verse wise. Yeah, and then I got to, I got to a point to where the musicology. But like, it wasn't about the silk. It was about Prince. I want to say it was about a Prince record that they were saying that it was similar to the the original verses. No, really? it's it's, it's a, was it? Yeah, I, I, we took the whole verse. Oh yeah, yes, yes, we yes. took the whole verse. And so the Prince was was uh, what's the name? Was TGT. We dealt, with, we dealt with it twice. Prince was oh. TGT. Yes, yes. Yeah. Fucking songs. Too many songs. In my yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was partying, man. Doing this a long time. Yeah, I was, uh, was having a good time, man. <laughs> <laughs> having a good time. The TGT man. sessions, man. I was partying, man. <laughs> okay, Quincy. <laughs> Me and time, Michael, man. man. I was having my food plated, man. Me and my Michael, we were just, you know, it's just a time. You know, I had the engineers that could carry on those stretches, girls, man. man. You've been pussy, man. Yeah. Just <laughs> they had to carry me on those stretches, <laughs> man. Yeah, I was on top of the pussy. Just kidding. Um, but yes. yeah, yeah. I had to keep changing that record, and it got to a point to where I was just like, fuck it. Just give them what they want. Mm-hmm. And so what is on the album is the third version of, of me singing the verses, mm-hmm. so me trying to dance and deviate and 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 get away from Silk's original melody, and I just couldn't go far enough away from it right. to make something different. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And so I said, you know what? Pay everybody, give them what they want. It is what it is. But my son, <laughs> you are part of one of those. Yeah. One. Yeah. They kicked our ass on the publishing. They definitely kicked our ass. Everybody. But but once again, the way we handled it was. Hey man, you just gotta just chop this shit up. Yep. You know what yeah. I mean? We yep. didn't even take the oh well, tank you the artist and nigga, I'm the manager, but we wrote it and we just mm-hmm. said, hey man, we don't do none of that. We all participated in, in yep. using this sample, mm-hmm. which has made this record a fucking great record. Yep. We gonna chop it up with how it's chopped up, man. Yep. It just is what it is. You know what I mean? And we got a fucking great fucking record that yep. is going to stand the test of time. Fucking with yeah. me literally needs to be re-released as a single. I am on board. Mike, I have to make, make another video appearance. Come on. There's another video appearance. Yeah. You ain't never called me for the videos, though. What video I'm going to call you for? Big, bro, you had so many videos where you had parties, nigga. Yeah, he remembered. Don't, don't do I this called, I'll, don't I'll do this called you for the... What's the name video? Which one? Before, the, uh, before we get, we get started. started. Oh, the one we used on the bar, t- dancing on the bar. Chris was dancing. Was no. it with Chris? No, no the, that my, nigga my went last, back to Shots Fire. You went back to Shots Fire. Oh, my last single. Before we get started. No, you did. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. You're going to disappoint yourself, dog. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to disappoint yourself. Just, just say you, you thought you said it, but you never pressed in. Look. You got receipts, Chief? You got a receipt? I keep I keep something on me. I keep something on me. It's taking a little long over there. You know, nigga got about four thousand texts he ain't looked at, so he got to go through those first. My name is M I C A H. I know. And you backwards mean. is Hakeem, Hakeem from the boys. From the boys. <laughs> I don't got it in here. Exactly, nigga. Listen, listen. When the, when the legends call, when the legends call, bro, I I respond. You're you're in the next one. My, my word, my need. word, son. Are we but, gonna shoot the video for fucking with me? Cause we gonna do something. Yes. Do it at the microphone like the kids do, man. No. In the middle of the motherfucking cornfield or something. No, you know <laughs> with the mic hanging down. Come on, bro. Do it. you gotta do the, the shit. The mic bro. coming out of nowhere. Do it. <laughs> you know I need some. No, fuck at all the that. Park? We're not, not spending a whole bunch of money, man. Just get the guy at the park. Mic. We are yeah. going. <laughs> we are, Why are you doing are, pull-ups and shit? At the park. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a hanging video. <laughs> a hanging it's gonna video. be a hanging microphone. Just do it, bro. But it's gonna be somewhere special. I oh, ain't got this nigga. He 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 always gotta have stars in the ceiling, man. Hey, that man got it. He got a vision. He right. no, he got vision. He got vision. We have a friend that's gonna allow us to cook. Okay. All right, fine. All right, fine. 
All right, man. You know I be you know I be directing this shit, man. So if you don't come with no corny shit, cause I'm gonna be like, man, I, let I me do this shit. I don't, I, I, it's, it's just me and the microphone and atmosphere. Let the atmosphere do its job and you participate, my friend. Okay. The atmosphere needs to be directed though. Yeah. I'm the, I'm your no, man. I'm putting my bid in. Hey, he directed now. I'm putting listen, my bid really in. Dog. Shit. I'm trying to take you somewhere <laughs> so you can have a good time, laminate. I got you. You know, I've had be, a lot of I've had a lot of good times. Should be going over his head. I got you. He, he's talking laminate talk okay. now. I'm talking laminate talk now. I know what you're talking, <laughs> man. I, I, but I do. I am. I'm, I am in my director bag. I want you to just consider See, this that. The other thing about Micah that you have to respect: his confidence level is at a 15. Yeah. At all. And he's times. always going to put his bid in. And I respect it, and I love it, and appreciate that about you. Man, thank you, Don't bro. Don't ever stop being that. Yeah. I don't you care how many niggas you got to argue with. You know what I... Bro, it's crazy, I man. I it's crazy. This you argue. I yeah, know. I definitely have argued. Um, but it's funny that certain people see, don't see you the way that you might not necessarily see yourself, you know? So when people pour into me like that, mm -hmm. I got to just receive it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm always hard on myself. Mm -hmm. I always think that I'm the least confident. I look at y'all and look at confidence. You know what I mean, and and wish that I could get to that level and want and strive to get to that level. So for you to say that to me, man, that that means everything, man, and that just put the battery, you know. No, you represent that for me. Yeah, yeah. Mike, you, you gotta stop. That. You gotta stop giving a fuck though. For <laughs> you're real, right. you're right about yeah. a lot of this shit, bro. Because you're talented, and you've proved Appreciate it. You, and you man. proved it. It's it's not like you're you're just yelling. I'm talented on top of a mountain. It's like no, bro. I'm talented because this says I'm talented. I showed you this, and I got success from that. Here goes the accolades. Here goes the resume. Yeah. Yep. It yeah. is what it is. Those those things, you know, they sell themselves. Yeah. And then you go and do your job, which you've always done. Like we said, when we call you for something, you show up. You do your job, bro. When other people call you, you show up. You do your job. That is very important in life. Fuck in, in music yeah. in life that you that you are a person that I feel like okay, I got a project. I need this type of. Let me call Mike. And then I always feel like oh he that nigga delivered what he said he was what you know what I mean yeah what we intended. Oh, I appreciate that, bro. Super important. I received bro. that. Girl, take a seat. Put some miles on my tongue. <laughs> you know I'm a freak. I'm a lick it while you come. I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna have you doing some things that make you say, "Oh no!" Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fuck you right if you let go, baby. You know, I baby, can you be know. A freak thing, you mm -hmm. on. Come on, listen, brother. Yeah, listen. Yeah, you demoed that record, and I went line for line. Mm -hmm. I said, "I want to sing it just like him." Mm. You don't be there you, for that you, shit. You bodied that though. You but, bodied but, that, But bro. guess whose nuance I used? I used yours. Yeah. I don't think you're ready. I used yours on purpose. I was like, he got that shit on here. Yeah. Now, you sang that with a certain bop. I need that. Mm -hmm. Man. We stayed in there. We I'm going to go back and listen to that shit now. We stirred, <laughs> shit we stirred and mixed till I yeah, got yeah, right yeah. there in your pocket. We was I was cooking. like, there he is. We was cooking. There he is. I got him. Yeah. I'm with him. Hey, you know what it is though, man. Like I be feeling like y'all niggas is my big brothers. We are. You know, like y'all, yeah. like y'all niggas is niggas like we family. Yeah, but we're not above you. That's the difference. Yeah, no, nah, and and not even from that sense. It's it's more so from a sense of you guys have always seen stuff in me that I may not necessarily have seen because I had a lack of presence. Mm -hmm. I could never stay present. Mm -hmm. I was always looking ahead or mm -hmm. to the past. Yeah, you know what I mean. But you guys have always, if I ever came to some sense of presence, you know, you guys like called it out of me mm -hmm. because you spoke to the king in me. Yeah. Even on the court, when I would go play play ball and that environment would just be hostile. It's just like, man, we are not playing for 10-day contracts out. We're not going to the league out here. And you used to just be like, man, fuck all that. Just cook. Just keep shooting, dog. Give me Micah. Yeah. We're going to win. And, and and that right there, bro, that that to me is worth more than anything that you could ever ha do for me monetarily. Yeah. On on a record, you know what I mean? Like that for me is everything. Yes, sir. Confidence you know? is everything in everything that we do, bro. 
Because once you believe, I don't care what it is. It's some niggas out here with some foolishness. Yeah. <laughs> but they believe. Yeah. yeah. And, and they be- sold it. And they done yes. sold it. Yes. Sold it. Yes. And it's working. Niggas got yes. rich off foolishness. Nigga, off what? Of off of believing yeah. in that foolishness. Yeah. Yeah. Making yeah. you like, is it? Yeah. Now, what am I missing? What am I missing? That's, he that's standing on it. That's 90% of this business. You look at somebody like Sexy Red, like she's out here standing going crazy on it. But but like just doing her. Not caring. It ain't for me, but she's speaking to a whole generation and really don't care about what nobody that ain't fucking with her is talking about. I promise you there's a I million like, people. I like her music. There's a million I know, people you that feel this thing. He, he introduces me. He's the only reason I have a ratchet bag. Because I was in I, I was in my pompous creator bag. Like, I was just, you know, there that's beneath me. I don't need it. He got to do something and, to offset and that, and pretty, would that pretty boy. And would hit me every image. other day like, nigga, you ain't heard this though. <laughs> nigga, and he turned that shit off like this. I kind of like where you're going with this, Jay Valentine. You are. Hey, and that introducing like those street nuances and things where I'm like, hmm, okay. Jay is a very okay. analytical nigga. No, no, he's, I, he, he's I, a... I, I, I listen, love that about Jay. His, his, his charcuterie board, his charcuterie <laughs> board, there, there, there's nothing not on the board. Mm. This is a grand board yeah. of, of every snack that makes sense or doesn't make sense. It's on the board. And he can tell you why. Yeah. It's on there. Yeah. See, this right here goes, and then you throw that, and then you mm-hmm. put this way over here, so you can do it. But then you can probably put those two together, and then yes. do this. And that's why that over here is doing, mm-hmm. he, he's, he's a scientist in that respect. Yeah. He can tell you where the gold is, and something, I'd be like, man, what the fuck are you listening to? Yeah, yeah. What is that? Dude, you could have been a chemist, dog. Nigga. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, 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 that's another. I learned that really early yeah, yeah, in life. That's another. That that's another. Really early so early that's so 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 I learned that science from him. From finding the. Why is that working? That's why I want to know about everything. Yeah. Yep. I want to know about about everything, you know, even even in even in being a parent. Yeah, you know what I mean. We yeah. talk about that all the time, like student, still being wanting to learn with your kids. Yes, I want to know why. Yes, why do you want to jump over the couch? Why you, you know you yeah, can yeah, just yeah, walk yeah. right here? Hysterical. And sometimes yeah. the answer is it's just fun. It's just you know what I mean. That's simple. But there's always a reason. But there's why. a reason, right? There's a reason in, in everything, and and even in in music, there's absolutely a reason. Reason. You know what I'm saying? For mm-hmm. sure. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? So I, I be just trying to find the reason of why somebody likes something that maybe I don't in the beginning. And then I could grow to. Mm-hmm. And then you end up liking. Nigga, I, bro, I, <laughs> it, it ain't too much I don't like. Yeah. If it if it has It's cause you understand why it works. And I think that yeah. you like that. Yeah. I think you like that. You understand why it works. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Are you listening to Sexy Red in your car by yourself? No. no, not not by myself, but but I'm listening to the the records though. If it come and on I, the like club. nigga, I know the yeah. I like I mean, of course. No, I know the songs. You it's not like I yeah, don't yeah. know the songs like It's I'm, not hard to learn. <laughs> yeah, but it's still a thing of like knowing the record. Like mm-hmm. I know the records that means I've listened to the records and yeah. I understand why it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% I figured out why Sexy Red works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, I try to I try to also incorporate that into what we do mm-hmm. of having like oh that makes sense there i know why girls want to sing and it, if you wrote it purposely or not or from the conversation with janae why girls want to sing eat the booty like it's groceries and these are not all ratchet women that nope. want to say mm-hmm. that it's the same reason why people want to watch reality tv mm-hmm. you know what i mean these this is just expression yeah Sexy Red is expression. Ice Spice is expression. Yeah. You can say what Most you want to say about things, it. Saying the things that people want to say. Right. Ain't got the courage to say. Right. Absolutely. And that's what that that line was, really. It's like the audacity of the, the line. The audacity of all of it. Yeah. And we, people people like that. That rock star said, shit. That's what you get every day when you fucking with me. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Them young boys didn't Not, know what to do with it. 
That, you know how many old niggas want to say that? I be seeing the old niggas get ready like, oh yeah. They be ready to point niggas out. That nigga, like, that nigga look like a young nigga. I'm like, nigga, I'm 70 years old. Nigga, don't point to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yep. that is, you know who told me that? Out of all people. Babyface. Mm. I was in the room when he was writing for Drew Hill. And he said, swallow you like Reese's Pieces. Come on, girl, you know I need it. And I was like, that's whack. <laughs> I said it to him. I'm 18 years old. He probably don't even remember. I didn't bring that up when he when we brought him over here. But he said that. I might have brought a show, I don't know. But I was like, that's whack. I'm 18. I don't got no hits. I've never written anything. <laughs> no yeah, it's his yeah. fucking baby <laughs> yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he asked. He was like, yeah. oh, what y'all think about that? I was like, that, that Reese's Pieces, like, that's whack. Like, he said, no, no, no. You got to make sure that some that people remember yes. something in your song. Yes. It's hashtags. And that's ultimately why in the Mario record, how could you? Ghetto Kama Sutra. Yeah. I knew they were going to remember that shit. Mm-hmm. They're going to try and say, how do you do that? Hey, bro. That, how do you do the Ghetto Kama Sutra? That sounds exciting. That's what I'm searching for in every song that I write. I'm searching why for not? that moment that everybody's going to sing. Everybody's going to repeat. Yeah. Oh, Eat the Booty Like Groceries? Got it. Got it. One of the greatest songwriters, if not the greatest songwriter, in my opinion, ever, Babyface told mm -hmm. me that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sticking with what the fuck Babyface Better told believe. me. Yeah. Better believe it. Find you something that they're going to remember and that they're going to sing again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is a lesson. And I feel like music would be a lot better if niggas st stuck by that code instead of just blurting shit. Find something that people that's tangible for people to take home. And I know y'all ain't about to like my next statement, but uh, when that girl says... My something some pink, my something oh, some brown. Oh my goodness. We remembered it though. Yes. You can say what you want. You didn't have a choice. You don't have a choice. And, now, a choice. and now that I'm thinking about it, man, that line makes me cringe so much. But I wrote a, a line you called Eat the Booty Like it. Groceries. Listen, you listen. You can't get away <laughs> from it, brother. Listen, you're you eating can't. booty, okay? And she's just describing what you ate. <laughs> right. That's it. That's it. And we remember them both. You can't get away from them. Hey, you know. You scared? That's the great thing about songwriting, bro. Yeah. Yep. It's this expression. Yeah. What they say, 800,000 songs a day or something now, 80, whatever the, the number is, they mm -hmm. come out every day. Mm -hmm. How am I going to remember it? How am I going to remember your song? How am I going to remember it? Yeah. Something has to stand out in that song. You know how many people, nigga, I'm sure your, your DMs, your, your emails, how many niggas send you records? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't remember the hook. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. The ones I do remember, I'll play again. Even if it wasn't that good, I'm like, oh, shit. Wait, yeah. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah. And it can just be one moment one in moment. a song one moment. that will have me coming back to listen to that thing. Yes. One that's, moment that's that, important I, that, in I, music, that I grab bro. onto. That's what music is about. It's just about that. Let's find that one moment that people are going to be like, I can't wait to get to this part. Yeah. Here's a question. Who do you want to write for? What's your list, wish list of who you'd like to write for? Who you haven't written for? How about that? Um, I would like to write for Usher. Mm. Um, just because he's just one of my all-time favorite artists. Um, and I think you would write a super dope It's surprising, surprising I haven't written yeah. for Usher yeah. uh, yeah. before because I've written for like everybody. Like I literally was in a group at 17 working with Sean and Wanye from Boys mm. to Men. Hmm. They wrote songs on our demo. Yeah. Work with um who else do do let's leak that demo. Where's that demo at, man? Let's figure out. It is leaked. <laughs> some <laughs> some yeah, it's some out. kids in Germany got the whole catalog. Oh, they be getting with, it. Yeah, it's a song yeah. we did with Eric Dawkins and um Tony oh, Dixon. Dixon. Yes. Called Red Carpet. One of my favorite songs we did. Yeah, that leaked. But um Usher. Yeah, Usher I, is the <clears> person you you need I, that Usher record. Yeah, I, I I would say I would say Usher. Yeah, just for like <clears throat> I don't even care if the song never comes out. I mean I do, but if just to just to get to work with him, just because he was when I was in my form for uh formative years of R and B, he was like that nigga. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. You know, he was the nigga that I wanted to be at the when I was young, you know? What female? Brandy. That was easy. Yeah. That was easy. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> there's no other female I would rather work with more. And I've worked with a, a lot of them. Yeah. But 
So you never work with Brandy? Never work with Brandy. Never work with Usher. That'd be dope. Brandy and Usher. You yes. Cook. You cook. Yeah. What? You Absolutely. Cook. I'm saving my best. <laughs> well, we might get in the studio soon, so I think you need to. Let's go. You already know. I'm a phone call away, yeah. bro. Text. But he needs your best. Is what he's saying, best, bro. He said you can save it. Bro, you, <laughs> you said. You said, <laughs> you said you did say every time I came in, you I never, delivered. No, you, no, you show out. You I just said what you just said, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, brother. That's what happened. He was listening. Uh, listen, brother. I want the best for you. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, I'll awesome. come in here and show out, man. And come on, let's will. do it, bro. Of course you will. Let's do it. What you got from over there, Chief? <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. I love that intro. Very Superman-ish. That's gonna be the song we're gonna write. We're gonna write the song called Superman. Superman. You should have been had one of them songs. Should have been yeah. had one of those songs. The song is called Should Have Been Had a Superman. Huh? You've been playing with That's the mother the song. man. You should have been, been, been had you a Superman. Okay, I, I hear you. Pete. Hey, I'm gonna do it, Tony. <laughs> I hear you, Tony. Come on, dog. A Superman. Maka. <laughs> You made me say your name like that. Ma <laughs> Ma <laughs> I can't. People want to know you are. <laughs> top five. That's what they want to know. Your top five. Yeah. Top five. Uh, mm. Come on. Your top five. I'll be singer. <laughs> yeah. I tried to change that chord yeah. on you. First of all, you are going places, brother. <laughs> <laughs> what you just did right here, I can see the whole thing on Venice Beach right now. I can see Tank Tank hits Venice Beach. What? <laughs> Bro, bro, you you was in it with no sustain. No, sustain. you was in it, dog. I know how to, know how to work this Come thing, on, right man. Here, man. This keyboard, man. A lot of on, barbecue man. over there, man. A yeah, lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. Man. Top five, my top five R and B singers. R and B, okay. Uh, in no particular order, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say uh, Brandy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I gotta go. These are gospel singers, but uh, Mitchell Jones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Fred Hammond Talk to talk The great Talk to talk um, Fred Hammond said he pulling up to the pocket That's what he said he said pull up to this Talk to him yesterday Yeah, yeah. You and, and, you? and these are These are surely people that Impacted Poor my you. life yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah You know what I mean Our Me lives too. Me too uh, Okay yeah Our so, lives so, yeah, so, yeah. So, so Being selfish on the yeah, pod yeah, yeah, yeah. First he don't think yeah. we know nobody He don't think we know nobody We don't know nobody And his top five singles only affected him Yeah 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 I don't know where he's going with it You don't know no Mitchell Jones Uh Are you at three Okay number four I would say um Chris Martin Oh he's not he's not R&B Hey listen Hey that's you Hey. It's your okay. world. Your well, world. Chris Martin is. Because he influences your arm. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Phenomenal mm -hmm. uh, voice. Absolutely Phenomenal is. voice. And uh, the last one I'm going to have to do, uh, I'm going to have to say uh, Charlie Wilson. Um, and because the man is 176 years old, still sound the exact same. Ooh, -wee. <laughs> Get it. Get it. <laughs> You do like it. there is you no, do it. there is no. I'm gonna send him that clip. Of me there is no that. fallout. There's no decline. 
Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie is incredible. Yes. Yeah. Uncle he's, Charlie he's, would, in, he's incredible. Uncle Charlie would kick your ass. Yes. Go ahead and call yourself being young yeah. and trying to perform after Charlie Wilson. Go ahead. No, you and then try. pray for you. Try it. You better not. Yeah. Try. You better not. I dare you. Yeah, bro. Ass yeah. whooping. Yeah. Uncle Charlie. I like that. <laughs> Top five R&B songs. This might be a little more difficult. <clears throat> All right. Um, I'm going to say The Beautiful Ones, Prince. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, you go, you starting off hot. Yeah, yeah. Um, they I'm hurt say, you every time. Ugh. They hurt you every time. I'm going to say, um, I Can't Help It, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Merry Go Round, Music Soul Child. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great. Okay. Um. Cool. Just to keep you satisfied, Marvin Gaye. Mm, okay. No argument here. Yeah. And then number five, I will have to say, uh, I'm going to go Siegfried, Frank Ocean. Then give him some Frank. Yeah. Yeah, these are Girl. songs that, that just like really tuck, hit yeah, uh-huh. in a different uh-huh. way. I get it. I get it. Let's build your Voltron, super R&B artist. Where are you going to get the vocal from? Performance style, styling, passion of the artist, and who's going to write for the artist? One vocal to build your super R&B artist. What's it going to be? One vocal. Who's going to sing that? Who's going to sing? Does it have to be one of my top five? It'd be one of my top five. Okay, okay, Marvin. She's going to let Marvin be the lead singer instead of you? You keep getting kicked out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep getting kicked out. The yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you looking at Marvin like this. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be a wild nigga to stare Marvin down while he's I wanted to be Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, taking me out the equation, uh, Marvin. Marvin. Um, performance style. Performance. Uh, he definitely got to be. I'm gonna say Chris. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Chris just can do everything, man. Mm-hmm. He can just do everything. Yes. Styling. Style. The drip of the artist. That's a tough one. That's a cold ass dressing R and B nigga. Uh let's go to the next one. I'm nope, gonna come back no. to it. Okay? Mm-mm. No. no. <laughs> Style, all right. Oh, uh, for real. Mm. Mm. Great call. Very yeah. fly, nigga. Great call. Yeah, for real. Love that. Tripping. Get your own clothes, your own shoes. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes yeah. the godfather then, of all this then shit. Then I'll run a big house if I need to. Yeah, yeah. Love that. Yeah. Um, passion of the artist. The passion. Uh, tank. The heart of the art. Ooh. Tank. Yeah. Tank a passion, nigga, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I act like the nigga ain't here. Yeah. Nigga passionate nigga, man. Do nigga any nigga do five hundred push ups in the back before he go out? Hey, I mean it, bro. Any nigga that's still relevant like he is at this stage in his career, take passion. That's I mean it. that's passion. Thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that is passion, that's real talk, bro. bro. I want you to know that you are doing some unprecedented shit right now. Yes, sir. Lean into it, my brother. Yes, sir. Who are you, you on twenty five? Shit. Yeah. yeah. You come a long way from baby blue leather. Well, see, the baby, hey, baby blue, blue beanie now. Is, he, is, it ain't really gone. I keep remnants of it around. <laughs> I, keep, I keep little reminders. <laughs> Motherfuckers know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Who's writing for your artist? Oh, who's writing for my artist? Yeah. John Mayer. Yeah. John Mayer yeah. Is, yeah. is literally no, one, no, one no, of the no. coldest. I, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. He's my favorite writer of I all like time. where you went with this. I love where you yeah. went with that. John Mayer. Just, yes, man. Ooh, that's just nasty. Yes. Kids, study. Study. JM. Study. study. Early JM. Room for Squares. Continuum. Yeah. All Room those albums. Where the Light Is. All of that. Study John Mayer. He is a savant of this thing we call music. Talk the talk, brother. Talk the talk. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> 
Where you going, Sham? Where you going, Sham? Where you going, Sham? I ain't saying no names. Hey, I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. We was, we was with you. What you did? Don't say shit. I ain't saying no names. Yeah, shout out to the champagne. That champagne got you saying. Nigga, what is in this? Yeah, yeah. These R&B money glasses. Get you some. <laughs> Jesus. Pour some more of that. It's in the pool. Jesus. Shit, nigga. Yeah. My God. It's in the pool. Hey, nah, you, you went to another level right there, bro. And it was effortlessly. Not the church, man. That's the... No sustain, church. might I add. <laughs> no, t- my foot ain't on nothing. <laughs> His foot ain't on nothing but clouds. Just clear. That's it. <laughs> Okay. So you know where we at. Ooh, well, yeah. Listen, you've watched this show. You've known us for a long yeah. time. You know what this shit is. Man, I uh, I ain't saying no names. Where you tell us a story, funny or fucked up, or funny and fucked up, and since you are a partner, it's something you ain't told us before, nigga. Yeah, because... <laughs> I know about a lot of wild shit. Man, boy. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I've had, I got a lot of those stories. A lot. Yeah. I know you a do. A lot. Um... So, where I'm from, they call me R and B Cuz. R and B Cuz. R and B Cuz. They call me R and B Cuz, cause I never turn down a fade. <laughs> and we know this too. We'll sing, and never turn down a fade. Um, so I caught a fade with a a guy who's they he out of here. He he uh. I would say he manages one of the biggest artists in the world, like partners with one of the biggest artists in the world. Now, but when we was kids, when we was younger, me and Mike have never fought. This is my guy, bro. Bro, listen. Everybody know they don't want no problems with Valentine. No, bro, don't, no, don't let that violent. don't let no. that hair fool you. I'm sorry, nigga. bro. Get back to don't your story. Don't let that really. hairline and that hair. I apologize. Fool you. <laughs> This man is from what the, film? The, I absolutely am. Finish your story. Come on. Your story. So, so you, um, you caught the you caught the fade. I caught the fade, but I want to say it was over a woman, but it wasn't. And it's always like that, it's right? Oh, it, 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 She's in there somewhere. It, it, it sparks, and then after that, it becomes testosterone and and aggression and ego. Mm-hmm. So, um, I I was on tour. On Scream Tour, this was like 05, 06. Um, I was doing my thing, and I had a girlfriend back at home, and apparently she was doing her thing. Mm. Um, so when I got off tour, and you know, we back together, we yeah. in my, my crib, I'm seeing her phone blow up. And and this is back when we had, what's the uh, sidekicks? Mm. So AIM was on the sidekicks. So I see... You know, me just being, a, I'm like, oh, something ain't right. So I just look over. I have been a glance over, and I see her aiming with a nigga I know. And so right I, there, while you're there, she's a, she's going back and forth with him. Well, she had got up to go to the bathroom or something, and then I did something that I I ain't never did before that. But I was like, really, I felt it in my spirit. I was like, man, something going wrong because I was doing wrong. Mm-hmm. So. That's what Michael Jackson said. <laughs> You're doing wrong. <laughs> You're doing wrong. <laughs> yeah. So um, I I get into her phone and I see is this nigga, you know, texting her back and forth. Mm-hmm. Inappropriate shit, might I add. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like a young 21, 22, somewhere around there. So I'm like, I stick my chest out. I hit him back like, hey, homie. <laughs> it starts there? Hey, homie? Yes. Okay. Hey, homie. Okay. Don't hit this phone no more. And you know who this is. Okay. All right. Okay. So that nigga responds back immediately like, who the fuck you talking to? I know you. You an R&B nigga. Stop playing with me. And I'm like. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, so I'm going back and forth with him. We we on On the. On her? On her phone. (laughs) I love this. Mind you. 
she's some she sees me on her phone so me and her had a very volatile relationship and we were young so she starts to try to get physical with me um i throw her phone out the house she somehow gets my phone grabs her phone gets in the car and i'm like give me my fucking phone i get on the hood of her car <laughs> the hood. I get on the hood of her car. Okay, all right. And you know the line between the windshield and the actual hood. Hold I'm on. holding on. Mm-hmm. Gotta hold on there. She's drives off like that meme or that. It's like a. It's like a girl that has that meme, right? Hanging yeah. on the car. Yeah, like, okay, yeah, so, yeah. So it's Mike because she got she got my phone, and I don't want her to see all the debauchery no, no, going that's on. That's in your phone. In my phone. Because you just want to check her to be right. Her phone. I want so to. Okay. Out the show. Yes, I, I had the upper hand. You out of pocket, but go ahead, pimp. So. <laughs> I'm holding on. She driving like no no joke, like 30 miles per hour with me on the hood. Some shit that could hurt you. No, some shit that could really hurt me. Yeah. Um, um, so I don't even know how I don't remember how I got out of that, but I'm still mad at this nigga. So I switched to my phone because I have his number. <laughs> So I go to We gonna continue this. I, I, I go to I go to this bar where all the homies was linking up. It was a popular bar where they would have R, uh, R&B live performances. Because you're an R&B nigga. Yes. The R&B so, nigga had to go I, to the R&B bar. Right, right. So, yeah. to link up. so I'm, to I'm, link there, up. I'm, I'm there. I'm um, there. I'm drinking. And I, something just tells me, hey, nigga, if you're a real nigga, you'll pull up to the Temple Bar right now. He was like, bet. I didn't think he was going to pull up. The nigga pulled up mm. with all blood. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I knew I knew half of them. You know what yeah. I mean? So it was all good. I wasn't finna get packed out. All the LA niggas know each other. I, y'all, I knew, y'all, I knew y'all, y'all know each other somehow. So he he actually pulled up and um I'm in a bar and this is I've been drinking. The only one that's in there with me is my cousin David. Tavares was there. You know you can't say no names, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Oh shit. But, <laughs> but, I'm drinking, folks. Uh, he texts me like, nigga, I'm outside. What's happening? So I put my drink down and I tell the homies, all right, it's time. Let's, let's, let's so get this outside. this woman has started a gang war. It's pretty much what we get to. But go ahead, finish. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so I get outside and it's, it's the weirdest shit, man, because I like I know all these homies. I'm dapping up homies and we walk in. This is like a very for a uh, structured fate. <laughs> like, this is an organized. This is an organized. Listen, this is the other thing I'll say about LA. Y'all organized out here. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Big little tiny. Yes. Baby. Or yeah. I said yes. it wrong. Baby tiny. It's rank. Infant. Yes. Like, it's a hierarchy. Y'all yes. Here. You niggas is military. Yeah. 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 Military yeah. gang members. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. 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 So um, so we go to the alley, and we nigga we just. We start going at it, and the first half of the fight, I'm really giving it to him. And then um, the alcohol kicked in, and he caught me with a two piece. (laughs) 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 He he caught me with a two piece, and I hadn't been working out like that, so I was like, "Ah." blame it on the juice. Yeah, so cardio what? So we get so it's like you know how niggas tussling, you get on the ground, and then niggas is just rolling on the ground, and then. They like, hey, stop that, stop all that, stop all that wrestling blood, stop all that wrestling blood. So they break niggas up and make niggas stand up again. Of course, of course. And fade. And that, at that point, it just was niggas throwing haymakers. It was a very it was sloppy fight. Point, it, was it, was fight. fight. it was not a good fight. It was not a good fight. The the artist that's huge now, I think he was. I, I think he was the one that was like he was filming the whole fight. Oh shit! On a camcorder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um. After I, after the after the fade, it's like handshakes. I shook the dude hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shook the OG's hands, and it was all good. Uh, like two days later, I see me on MySpace. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I'm on MySpace, and this nigga has done an incredible job of, of, of the editing. editing this video. <laughs> and you don't have the video to make your edit. <laughs> no, <laughs> you getting chopped. No, but I but it, I didn't get beat up. It just right. looked like he it looked like he won. He won, right? You know, um, and I'm talking about this nigga made edits where he reversed it, slow motion, wrote cap captions. I'm like, how? Oh, they went crazy on you. This was like 07. It it wasn't no cap cut. <laughs> wow. 
So he went crazy. And it was on, they put it on, they uh, page, uh, they artist page, all that. So I got everybody hitting me. Yeah. Niggas like, Kev, why you didn't call me for this shit, Kev? <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, it just was, it just happened. I wouldn't, I didn't call nobody like that. I, yeah. I was with some niggas. And it was like, well, at least you got out, Kev. Okay? Because, <laughs> like, you know, I, at that time, I hung around um, Crips. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but, and they was all bloods. And so they was extra mad because it was all blood niggas. Yeah. So, yeah, that happened. And I was like, everybody in the city saw it. And I had to answer questions. Right, right. People hitting me like, you. why, why was y'all fighting? Why is y'all, you know? And then you got to say y'all fighting over This is the coldest. The coldest part was I had a Jesus piece on when I was fighting. <laughs> gotta have it. <laughs> the Old Testament. <laughs> the, my girlfriend was at the same bar that we were fighting at. The girl y'all fighting over? The girl. Uh, y'all yeah, fighting people, over a essentially, woman, man. Uh, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there. look, so there's an alley, right? And there's two buildings here. And I'm walking from the fade. I got my necklace on. And she's 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 walking with her friend. And she sees and she tries to tiptoe back like nobody could see her. We, I'm like, I already saw you. So she ends up taking me home. My Jesus piece, the Jesus was crying a bloody tear. And I I got on my knees and said, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> did, did some blood from you? Some blood from me. But, but it, it literally happened to get, it right, happened to get right. It looked like a perfect tear coming down from Jesus. And that shook you. That shook me to the core. That was Jesus. I'm out you. here doing too much. I don't approve. I don't approve. I don't approve. Thing. God watching. All throughout my life, things like that have happened. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's my that's my. Oh, I ain't man. saying no names. And but what's crazy is after that we became cool. Yeah, I got that artist on some of my songs. Like we built a relationship. Like it was all good. Yeah. And that's the beauty in this whole thing is like when you do, you know, when niggas is good hearted. They may have differences and turbulence and all of that, but at the end, at the end of the day, you know what kind of nigga I am, and I know what kind of nigga you are. And if it wasn't for this bullshit, we'd probably be cool. Yeah. So, nigga, let's put that shit aside and peace up. And that's what niggas did. It was honorable. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I love that story. Yeah. I love that story. The fade? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. The MySpace edit is hilarious. Uh, MySpace edit is, is great. <laughs> I'm talking about in the. You it's remember great. they? You remember yeah. they put it, yeah, it right on, on the header, and then niggas is reposting it in the in the comment <laughs> section. You know the comment used to run down the side. Ah, knock that nigga out, blood. Niggas is talking. <laughs> My brother is online at war with niggas. <laughs> More niggas. Should Why you do that, nigga? Head. Like that. I'm looking uh, at it like, yeah. man, I want my kid back. Nah, I can't do that. I already shook hands with. The nigga. More niggas should catch the fade. Boy, niggas should catch the fact. They never will. Though. It's, yeah, because niggas don't keep it to just hand I'm no just, more. I'm yeah. just, I'm just, I mean, uh, unfortunately, I'm just from a different time. Yeah. I, ain't nothing no, like I a good I fight. Re I respect that. No matter. And I, you see, we didn't ask who won, who lost. We didn't, don't we matter. Don't yeah, it don't you, matter. You, you, got, you got yeah. out there. Get your squabbles up. Yeah, yeah, you got down. For Shit. sure. Yeah, <laughs> That's exciting. Roll around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the only unexciting part is that it was over a woman. Yeah. It's always over a nah, woman. Nah, nah. I've never fought over a woman in my entire life. I haven't I either, but it. I'm just trying to find. <laughs> I think that there's a, there's a place. There's a place. Many, many wars. I'm glad you, hey, I'm, I'm a, glad you matured, bro. I mean, I'm going to just tell I'm you. I was, you matured, I, was, I was lost, man. I was, a wild, I was a wild boy. <laughs> I almost, almost, almost killed a nigga over a woman. But then I had to remember. I have to remember that she's in violation too. If she don't, if she don't make way for him, it don't happen. Well, see, the reason why I don't say it's over woman is because it was more so over ego. Because I call myself checking him. You well, you were doing. And he what told you, me you were don't doing what me, you were supposed that. to do. It's over. You know, what it's mean? over woman, Our bro. Ego. Though, yeah. If we. <laughs> Yeah, just accept it. It's, it's it cool. Is. It's, 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 we it fall is. down. It is. But what? But we get up. <laughs> yes. Ah, you fell down. Saint is just a sin. <laughs> you fell down. With a Jesus piece of Jesus piece. <laughs> With a bloody tear Jesus protected it. you. <laughs> he did. 
<laughs> After that two piece, you should have been. He paid the you price. You should have been done. After the two piece, they could have maxed you out. He paid the he price for it. He could have maxed you. <laughs> Dope this nigga. <laughs> she bitch now. What I tell you, I would have maxed you out, but you had no Jesus. This is hysterical. You lucky your Jesus is bleeding. Hey, you can't stop a nigga that got a Jesus piece. Not the Jesus is bleeding. No, no, No. No. that's the one. That's the one that saved us. (laughs) Gotta, he's come on, Michael. It was it's oh seven. It's a long time. Seventeen years ago, bro. Yeah, he's you, kids, y'all, man. y'all know me, bro. I, that, I know I, you. That's just a fraction. I got so many stories, bro. I've lived. Listen, a, I, res- I, re- a bro, I respect it. I, res- I respect you from from the first day I met you, bro. You, when I say you solid, hey. and and if you need to get to it, you gonna get to it. All of that, bro. Like you gonna figure it out. Yeah. yeah, whether it be talent, whether it be anything, like I, I, I just, I just got real love for you, bro. Yeah, and, hey and, man, and absolutely. And that, that means a lot to me. That'll bro. never yeah. change, bro. Yeah. That means a lot. Ever, ever, for real. So, Both of y'all, for real. You, you got, you got, you, you got two brothers left. <laughs> hey, dog. <laughs> you got two brothers <laughs> left. <laughs> we with you, bro. We with you, R&B yeah. Cub. <laughs> yeah, I love it, bro. No more fangs, bro. Yeah, no, he's stop. no, he's catching phase a different way now though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So now doing, he's Muay Thai. I get it. He's Muay Thai cut now. I get hey. it. I get it. But God. just because you know it, yeah, 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 don't mean you need to. I use don't it. even. I don't carry that energy with me. It's the craziest thing because I actually learned in there how to relax more. Mm. You got to understand this about this is the thing about the thing about fighting right is that the people who are truly not prepared are the people that are always ready to fight mm-hmm. and you almost feel sorry when you're like you have no idea what you're about to get yourself into at all no motherfucker but it's... you've already used up too much energy doing that shit <laughs> yes <laughs> yes dog yeah. you've already used it up it's gonna take me three to four seconds to really change your life revitalize your image that's all we need <laughs> so i respect you for 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 learning the discipline that it takes to go along with that you know what i mean and if you you're you gonna you're gonna get in the ring get organized you go i did he caught his first one when yeah. michael Last one and oh i won but i'm not i listen people keep telling me you about to you about to be a fighter no, you about no. to be a fighter how'd you, no, how did you win um decision a split split yeah How'd you yeah. feel like you did? I felt like I did good for bro. I was tired when I got in there. It's different when you fighting in front of people and because and, you what what you got to say? You got to relax. Exactly. Yeah. But, and and the thing was, I was the third to last fight, mm-hmm. so I'm back there, you know, doing too much. Warm, you know, and and just looking in anticipation and the the adrenaline and you got the, the anxiety and the nerves and all of that. I I didn't know about that. So I'm warming up to do, like, they do this thing where you do 20 kicks to warm up. By 10, I was like, oh, this is real. I'm gassed. So what I did was um, my, 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 my bro, Prophet Lovey, who, love you, bro. Um, he came back and kind of, like, helped me to relax because he did some shadow work with me and just helped me to just get center myself. And then I meditated. So then when I went up there, I'm like, People were like, you almost seem too calm. Because when I got in that ring, I was super calm. Um, but I also knew that I needed to conserve my energy, so I just kept it basic. Jabs and leg kicks. Mm-hmm. And if you wanted to mix it up a little bit, we did. Mm-hmm. But at at this point in my life, I'm not finna be doing all the extras, bro. <laughs> it came out with the dub, man. I'm I'm proud of myself for yeah, doing that. Proud of myself for always challenging and stretching um, my boundaries mm-hmm. and you know, I'm going to continue to do that. You know, it just is what it is. It's my lifestyle now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't stop doing the music. I still need some more records from you. you know what I'm saying? Nah, music will never leave me, R&B bro. Movie type of. It, it'll never leave me. But yeah. for real, keep me in mind with the directorial shit. I got the vision, bro. We will see. All right. 
I'm gonna hold you to that. Like, I, don't, I don't sell no wolf tickets. <laughs> I know. That's real tough. Never did. We will see. Mm -hmm. You will get your shot. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. This is the RB Money Podcast, the authority on all things RB. Yeah. Um, some I don't know, man. We just have a friend, we got a brother, we got a loved one on here, man. And and I think out of all things, that's what matters most, man. We love you, brother. Yeah, we love, love y'all, bro. Michael Powell, man. Thank you, man. <laughs>